Hi, my name is Nicole Magelli, and today I have Michael Daly with me. Hello. Do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? <laughs> sure. I am a uh, story artist living in San Francisco. Uh, I grew up in California and uh, kind of moved around a little bit, but ultimately have come back to California and living um, in the city for a second time, which is great. Uh, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, here's the icebreaker question. All right. Tell us your favorite quote, but in your own words. Oh my gosh, tell us your favorite quote, uh, but in your own words. Okay. Uh, it's, it's probably like uh, something like nothing in excess, but I guess I would say uh, I probably, it's usually what I'm telling to my friends with something kind of like, dude, chill with that or something like that. There you go. So dude, chill with that. I'll stick with that. Wow, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what role has fear played in your mindset towards art? Wow. Okay, coming right off of it with fear. Yeah, Jeez. baby. <laughs> wow, gosh, fear. Um, fear is uh, interesting. I think uh, there's a lot of ways to, to kind of like analyze that. I guess fear would be, is it the idea that like, is it, is it like the thing that eats at your confidence? Is it like your worry about the future? Um, and it could be all these things, I'm sure. So I guess, um, I guess the thing that always is like in question is uh, whether or not, uh, for me, it's like whether or not I feel confident in the stuff that I'm creating. So if I'm drawing or I'm storyboarding and I just want to feel confident in what I'm doing. Um, and I, uh, I think sometimes like a little bit of insecurity kind of creeps in. Uh, and I, uh, if I make something with a certain amount of insecurity, I always feel like I'm disappointed in it. And so uh, I'm just always trying to be careful to be my true self, which is hard because I think we're always changing and we're always evolving. And I, uh, so you always have to kind of catch yourself, see where you're doing, uh, you know, like go like, okay, is this my best work? Is this what I want to do? Is this what I really want to say? Um, because if I feel like I tr start pitching or I start making art that I feel like someone else will want besides myself, then I feel like I get into this trap of uh, like they probably won't even like it and I don't like it and no one likes it, and, you know? So you always want to make kind of trying to want to work in the way that is natural to you. And sometimes it's hard to be in tune with that. Yeah. So um, when you say you're trying to get rid of insecurity in your art, does that mean you're sure when you make something that you really like, you're sure of what you want to say and like the technical aspects of it? Yeah, I, I guess uh, there's there's like a certain level of um, not necessarily technical, but more along the lines of I'm excited to work on it. It's more emotional, right? So uh, I'm like, I'm, oh, I, oh, I feel excited to work on this, or oh, I can't wait to to draw this up really quick, or uh, I can't wait to get this idea out. And uh, those, for me, tend to be the most satisfying elements and the ones that really resonate well with other, with not only myself but other people. And so I think that uh, the emotional feeling of like, I like this, I. Uh, you know, if you're if you're working on a project and you're not you, you you're putting it off, it's like why are you putting it off? Like why don't you like it? What's what's wrong with it? How can you, you you know maybe you can change your mind about it. Maybe you can look at it from a different angle and maybe you can find something a little bit more interesting. You know, for yourself to work on. Yeah, it's really good advice. That's how you get passion in your work. That's yeah, awesome. there you go. How does fear affect your work and how do you combat it? Right. Um, so I think, I think sometimes there's, uh, you want things to work really well, uh, and you want everyone to be satisfied with the work that you're doing. Uh, so if you're gonna, if you're gonna work on something, you're like, I want to make something, I want everyone to like it. And I want, you know, uh, it to be a great success, but 
I don't necessarily, I, I have to kind of sometimes talk myself out of that thinking just to be like, look, I'm just having fun doing this drawing. It's fun for me. Uh, it's like, it's what I like. I find it funny or I find it like emotional or I find it, you know, powerful. And so I will put that forth and then hopefully that emotion will read through that like art that I'm working on. And so the way that I try to combat that is I just try to <laughs> completely remind myself over and over again about that idea. Like as if um, you just have to kind of like check in with yourself to see if, if the, what you're working on is is truly what you want to make. And of course, uh, the other way that I combat that, and I think a lot of artists do, is they, it's, you know, you obsess about it. And so you're, if you're working on a cool project that you like, you know, you go to bed and you're thinking about it and you're probably dreaming about it and you wake up in the morning and you're thinking about it. So it kind of haunts you. And uh, it's just you kind of like thinking about this thing, trying to like make sense of it, trying to, to roll it around in your head, look at it from all angles and find the best possible outcome. You seem like a very motivated person, which is what I really like. What do you do when that motivation, inevitably, I think there are periods where you don't, you have to keep reminding yourself why you're doing the thing you're doing. What happens for you during those periods then? Oh, I think, uh, yeah, I, I guess it's always best. I, 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 I find, I've been finding it very beneficial to kind of look at things from like a different angle try something new um you know it could be as simple as try a different medium for the art that you're making uh it could be like um oh i don't like to go for runs so, okay all right cool well why don't you just kick a soccer ball around you know at the at the park for like an hour oh okay and so like you're the core kind of idea of like what you're trying to get out like exercise and stuff like that is still there but you're just kind of like moving it around in your head. So I think getting that inspiration is, it can be very powerful. Cause I, I think if, if you like from different angles and especially when uh, the other, the other great thing to do is to talk to other artists, right? So you talk to other artists and then you can see that they have like a different aspect of this or they're like, oh, I don't really worry about that. I worry about this. And it's like, oh, okay. Oh, I really worry about this. Why do I worry about that so much? So I think, uh, you know, a lot of your questions are about fear and about, you know, like passion, things like that. I think a lot of that has to do also with communicating with other people, uh, you know, and, and, and your society. Cause like, and, and, and your, and your own kind of like little social network, because they'll allow you to kind of like look at things from different angles. They'll be able to, uh, give you different opinions uh a lot of times they'll be like yeah i know exactly what you mean when you say you know you feel like in a rut or or like you're you're having a lot of frustration with this like because they've gone through the same thing a lot of times that's really good advice it's really important to know that you're not alone <laughs> yeah totally yeah so i'm really curious when you encounter like a problem what yeah. is your first thought Oh gosh, that's a great question because I think I usually end up being a little bit more on the cynical side of things. And so I'll like make fun of it. Uh, it I, I, I tend to feel like I'll, I'll try to solve it right away. And I think the best approach, which is, you know, taking time to learn is just to really kind of like just absorb the problem or the question or the issue and kind of just see like what, what, what's at the root of it instead of reacting immediately to it just like kind of like trying to understand it and then allowing yourself to react yeah it's powerful i think it's just kind of like stepping it out yeah like, that's really good i don't think i've ever heard that method before oh really i think uh, yeah i wonder because i i think um uh, i think i think it just has to come from kind of like if you if it's like a let's say it's a problem with another person or something or you have an issue you know everyone's trying to do their best in this world and so uh if you really kind of like understood and try to like put yourself in like the shoes of other people and and try to like see what they're coming from you can kind of understand like why they made those choices things like that you can better understand them and then you can have a more mature answer 
right? Instead of maybe something that's like reactionary, you can have like something that's a little bit more um, powerful and maybe like not as combative. You can just kind of get everyone on the same page. That's really and in good. that way, like you can definitely, I've definitely turned, you know, uh, stories around uh, in, in um, if you pitch something, maybe it's not as successful, uh, like you pitch something for a movie and then it's not as successful. And then when you, uh, when you come into, when you end up uh, like talking to people and like showing them like why, like maybe like leading them towards like why they should kind of like back that idea, you can definitely like, uh, you can definitely bring that success back to that project. It's really good. It's really important to give that time to think. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, what were you scared at at the start of your career? And has that changed? Have you encountered the thing that you're scared at? Oh, interesting. Um, you know, I, I always thought uh, it would be stressful to pitch in front of people. Uh, a lot of people have that problem with like a, like kind of like stage fright, um, but I tend to I tend to like it. I kind of have it more, a little bit more fun. Like I think uh, the minute I realize um, I'm pitching to people, it's and they're going to help me. And once they're to help you, like it's it's uh, it's a lot easier to think of it that way as opposed to like they are not trying to like they're opposed to you. Um, as a story artist, you're a lot of times you go away and you go into a little hole. And then you just draw like a million drawings and then you take all those, you know, those drawings and then you, you hold up, hold away for like two weeks, you take all those drawings and then you pitch them to people fresh. And, uh, for a while, it's kind of like only yours. And so I'm like, it's, it's kept. And so, um, at a certain point you have to like show it to other people and it can be scary because like we we're saying, like, if you really like it, they may reject it or not, you know, not be as, as into it as you are. Um, but I tend to feel like it's actually almost always been energizing, even if a pitch wasn't very good or if it was like, no one knows, everyone's like, Oh, that wasn't great. But, uh, it's still helpful to get that feedback from other people. What do you think? What aspect do you think? Um, I don't know what the word is like excites you so much about pitching, even if oh. it's good or bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I, I like the collaborative effort of like working with other minds and other people, especially when, if you can get a couple people on the same page, Oh, it's great. Cause then, you know, you know, your ideas are working at least at a basic level to communicate with other people. Right. So storyboarding is all about communicating these ideas. And so what you want to do is you want to hopefully communicate those ideas as, as clearly as possible. And, uh, uh, the feedback from other people can only help you because some of it you can take, you know, some of it, you don't have to take it all, but some of it like is good. And, and some is like, uh, you know, just helping you get like more aligned to like where you want to go and definitely like, ex like expressing like where, what you're trying to do is important as well. How do you know whether to take something or not? Oh man, I don't know. I think, uh, <laughs> Oh, that's a great question. Uh, I think, um, I think you roll it around in your head a little bit and, um, you, again, you see how your emotion like reacts to it. So if sometimes people will give you a note and it really stings and sometimes that's the right note because, and it's like, maybe cause it sting, it was stinging. It was, it was, you know, it was a note that I need to absorb. And so uh, I think you just have to kind of like, kind of like learn how to read yourself. Cause sometimes you're just like a note will make you like really mad. You'll be like, oh, I keep getting this note on this thing or they said this thing. And I, and then, and you know, I think kind of by your reaction that like, that's something that you probably need to work on or change or at least address, you know, because it got such a strong emotion out of you. That's super, super interesting. That's really good advice. I especially love what you were saying uh, previously about how um, the people you're pitching to are only there to help you. Yeah. As an actor, that's um, what you have to learn through auditioning and stuff. Nobody yeah. is like gonna kill you or anything in an audition room. It's just everybody's there to make something. And I think that's awesome. Right, right, yeah, yeah. So you you have more of like the actor training, right? And so you're yeah. looking at, it. it's similar. Like I, I think 
you know, animation, they always say animators are uh, actors on paper. Mm -hmm. And um, and so like you're kind of like hidden behind this wall of paper, but you're kind of getting the acting in there. But um, I definitely think that there's 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 a, a lot of stuff that can be uh, learned from from actors. You probably do a lot of improv and things like this, right? And so like all the improv, like it's just so helpful to get to brainstorm uh, and and uh, you know you played the games like yes and like the oh, improv yeah. games, right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know all that. So but that, it's really it's really good because if the yes and is just building on other people's ideas, and you're never cutting someone's idea like short. You're just kind of building on it and so uh which is great because it gets a lot of momentum and so a lot of those exercises are very similar to how story will work and in fact uh uh you know we have a group of uh story artists that do do some improv and Ooh. so yeah, yeah, yeah. that is and exciting is it yeah <laughs> it's it's nerve-wracking and it's a little hard to get out of your shell sometimes for an animator because you know, or a story artist, because you're sitting and you're 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 drawing, and uh, you're really trying. You know, you're you're immersed in your own little world, and then getting into a room or getting over Zoom now, right? Uh, with uh, with other actors is, uh, and just blurting out the first thing that came to your mind without editing anything is <laughs> is very vulnerable. Oh, but yeah. uh, but if you can do it, then uh, and and you see that like people think it's funny or they don't really, you know, they're not going to judge you or anything about it, then I think that you 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 get like a sense of connection with that group. You're able to like kind of like flow a little bit better. Oh, for sure. It's kind of like a failing speed run. Like you kind of find out that even if you say the stupidest, <laughs> most cringy thing, yeah. honestly, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, you know, but that's the funny thing, right? Because sometimes there's like a bad idea and then it just turns into a good idea. Like someone can say something really lame, but then it totally gets someone else to say something really amazing. And then like, it's like, oh, that was totally worth it. It's almost like uh, they always say like, there's no bad ideas. Well, I kind of feel like there is, but, you know, but at the same time, like, I think those bad ideas should be said because you can lead to like better ideas. And so you know, just working in a group in that way. Uh, it, that's why, like, that's why, I, that's where I find that energy from, from pitching and from working in a group. Yeah, for sure. That sounds so exciting. I can't wait to experience that someday. <laughs> Post COVID. <laughs> you will. I mean, you know, well, look, if you're, if you're, if you're an actor and you're, and you're taking these classes, then I think you're going to fall right into it and you'll be like, oh, this is just, acting class you know what i mean like and that's and that'll be great and so you'll feel right at home that's very comforting thank you <laughs> <laughs> um you mentioned to me um when we first talked about your personal reasons for creating art mm -hmm. and why you feel so drawn to it haha <laughs> oh, I, I see what you did there <laughs> um and how that changes as you grow as you grow and how life is like long I'd love to hear more about how that resonates in your work, because as a um, young artist, it's a little bit harder to see into the future, but I love the way that you explained mm -hmm. it. Hmm. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think we talked last time, and I think we were talking just about that idea of uh, when you th you think that you you watch animated films you fall in love with animated films i this is what happened to me and i'm sure this happened to a lot of people and then you want to work in animation really bad and uh but what you once you get there um it it is it it's a job and it's uh and it, but it, you know it's a lot of fun but it's also a job and so uh by the time you get there you'll probably want to start your, your your brain's already starting to think about other things like what am i going to do like where do i want to live i um you know i i i would think that for some reason i was like oh i'll get a job in animation and then uh everything will be great but it's just you know life kind of like moves along right and so life changes things change you absolutely change right and so uh i think 
keeping kind of like an open mind, like just work on your, like, I, I, I feel like the, the times I've always benefited is that I've worked on myself and then in working on myself, I'll find a, a spot that I want to be right. Um, because I think that aiming for something like that, uh, is, is hard. I right, aiming for like, like if you're like, Oh, that's the end all be all. I want to work in animation. Great. But, uh, you will end up kind of like, as you, it's such a, like a, a, a process, you got to go to school, you got to get some like smaller jobs and you find some other jobs and through that process, you're going to change. And so I think just being aware of those changes is really important to see how you are going to evolve. And so maybe you might not even, you know, you go through it all and you're like, you know what, maybe this isn't for me. Or, you know, it's like, oh, I don't really want to be an animator. I want to be a set designer or I want to be a, you know, I want to work in live action and film, you know, that type of thing. And so just keeping an open mind uh, always seemed to like to help. Uh, I feel like when I say life is long, I, I, I feel more along the lines of it changes a lot and you'll change a lot. And, you know, five years from now, you will be pretty different. Um, you know, we all will for the most part. Yeah, for sure. That's great advice, especially like, you know, as a kid, the whole thing is that storybook ending. You're always looking for it. Like once I get accepted into CalArts, it's all going to be fine, yeah, <laughs> but it's exactly. not like that. <laughs> exactly. 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 Yeah. All right. And so, um, you know, the, the dream would be instead of, you know, shooting for CalArts uh, and putting all of your eggs in that basket, like just make art that you like that you're really enjoying and you feel good and then you have a lot of good art and then you know that will kind of like give you that that will read in your art and so if cal arts doesn't accept you then they're crazy you know but uh <laughs> but, but by that time you might be like oh actually you know what this is uh i'm more set up for art center or you know you know i'm, I'm more set up for another school that you know, it goes in a different way, maybe not necessarily CalArts. So, um, yeah, I think that there's, there's definitely a benefit to helping your, helping yourself like by kind of like uh, really kind of like, like analyzing yourself and, and help and, and kind of like building yourself up as you go. So when I was in, um, when I was in, uh, in, you know, going for various animation jobs right off the bat, I had a very, I had a, 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 a lot of stuff in my portfolio from like everything, right? Some character designs and some storyboards and some 3D models and it had everything, right? And I was like, I'm ready for like any job, right? And uh, any job that would come out, I feel like I was um, putting together all this art um, like, I was like, oh, a storyboard job came up. Oh, okay. Well then, oh, I only have a little bit of storyboard. So let me storyboard some more stuff really quick. And then I aimed at that and I didn't get it. Right. And then a character design job would come up. Oh, okay. Let me, let me quick, let me, let me draw a bunch of character designs. And I, I'm now aiming at that job and I didn't get it. And I would do that for a few different jobs. But then at a certain point, I'd come back to storyboards and I'd be like, oh, if I only spent that time working on storyboards, you know, I would have been fine but like instead of kind of like trying to chase that job in any which shape or form it was easier actually just to like it would have been easier just to make my own storyboards concentrate on one thing you know and uh and when the job will jobs will kind of like appear when it's the right time that is very interesting uh Tanico pantoja recently did a video on that topic and i found that um surprising because really? yeah because um what am I trying to say? Exactly like how you said, you were in so many different areas that you wanted to do them all. Like how you said about keeping an open mind. Right. But when it comes time for a storyboarding job, it's not that you can't be prepared for that because you're already spreading yourself so much. How do you, um, as someone who does, I do a bunch of different things all the time, like yeah. writing and stuff. Yeah. Right. It's not like I am good at one thing. And mm -hmm. this is something that personally I am afraid of here right right how do you balance 
loving everything, keeping an open mind, but then right. also making sure you're specialized in something so that you are hireable in the first place. Right. Yeah. I mean, it makes it difficult, right? Because you want to, like, if you are one of those people that's involved in a lot of different things, you like to do a lot of uh, different projects. Uh, th there's a place for that. There's a place for people that um, can come in and they don't just do, you know, storyboards. They do storyboards and they do some editing and they do some animation, you know what I mean? And they do some effects. So there's there's kind of these positions that are for that. So I think uh, there's always this idea of like, you know, I feel like I'm contradicting myself in a way, but it's kind of like you, if you go for, if you, if you go for like one thing, like so strongly, but it's not the thing that you want to do, but that's what you're going to be doing because that's the thing that you're showing. Right. So let's say you're storyboard and you're like, eh, I don't really like storyboarding that much. Uh, you know, and you know, well, if you get the job, you're going to be storyboarding quite a bit. So, mm -hmm. um, there's definitely jobs out there that are kind of for those things. Like, okay, you want to be a writer and director then you, you know, you would be like, okay, this is the, the way that I want to do it. I want to, I want to work through these things. So you can kind of like find a niche. There's definitely like places for, for, for people that are, um, they call them like generalists, right? So a couple of friends that like have, and they're, and they're knowledgeable in so many little like factors. And so they kind of bring all that together to like produce this like amazing stuff because they have, they're so multifaceted, right? Um, and that's definitely an approach that uh that's 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 great that i think uh i think on paper it doesn't get a lot of power like i don't think yeah, a lot of people sure. like respect it very much but uh you know they call the jack of all trades right um but uh i don't think that you want you know i i think the quote goes something like that you'd have to correct me but it's it's something like Jack of all trades, master of none, but better than master of one. Or yeah, something that's like the this, one. Right? Okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you know it. Cool. And then uh, you, but you like you don't want to pin yourself so hard into one thing that like you have no like flexibility, because again, like you want to look at things from the outside. So like, if you go running or if you like soccer, these uh, if you are you like you know reading, like. Uh, you know, fiction and you watch anime, then all these things kind of like build up into your world. And they, they're just ways that you can kind of like look at yourself through different different like lenses. And, and those lenses can be helpful to like, kind of like break you free from like, just being like maybe like so closed on one, one idea. That's a fantastic answer. That's very helpful personally. <laughs> really? I don't know. I, yeah. I feel... <laughs> I'm actually I'm actually doing um, another series of interviews based on that topic of yeah. doing uh, people who do so many things at once like mm -hmm. once like uh, Alex Hirsch who oh, writes yeah. acts and yeah man <laughs> <laughs> he does it all yeah that's crazy that's very very helpful yeah, um, I hope, yeah I think you know you're on the right path I don't I don't think that there should be a nervousness to that because there's um, I, I definitely can sense that from yeah, you know, like some of my friends feel that way, uh, but they're good at many things. And to be honest, I feel like their life's pretty rich because they're able to like try different things and move things around. They're super flexible, right? So that's like a really powerful skill that just by itself, you're super. You you can write, you can direct, you can act. Like you're very flexible. Uh, yeah, for sure. That could be really powerful. Yeah, that's. Um... When I was trying to figure out what I was going to do after school, I was listing all the writing and acting and stuff, and yeah. um, I figured out the skill that everybody has is just storytelling in general. If you do that in acting and writing and art, if you got that, you're good. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah, all different kinds of storytelling, right? Different mediums and music, um, everything, you know? Yeah, for sure. Um, when is the last time you created without fear and how did that affect your work oh man uh let's see uh one of my favorite things to do is to uh uh poke fun at my friends yeah. and so i always feel that my best drawings are the drawings where i'll do something really quick 
on my I, I drop all my all my work that I'm working on. I drop it all, and I immediately draw in Photoshop or some on a piece of paper or something a drawing of them, and I'll send it to like a group of friends. We'll laugh and we'll have fun. So that's always like the part where I'm always like, oh, I can't wait to do this part. And uh, it's been pretty fun to kind of like pick at friends with stuff like that. Usually, um, I tend to like the art that's like kind of it's light. You know what I mean? It feels light in that way and. Um, I don't really care about the drawing and uh you know but in that way it's, it's kind of fun you know like it makes it funner or i can try it gets me a little bit more free i don't have to be you know sometimes you have to draw and model or have your characters like you know uh in the same kind of vein of uh film language that the other people that you're working with are, are working in and uh and sometimes you can just draw uh, like whatever you want and send it there it's funny it's a one-off. It's great. Made people laugh. There you go. That's great. I so. love that. That's awesome. <laughs> oh I'm no! Back. I I'm, hope I'm, the I'm, recording I'm saved. <laughs> 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 ah! I really hope it did. Um, <laughs> if not, we'll do it again. Not... We'll do it again. Uh, yeah, how does, just how from does the fear? Top. How does fear factor into you? Wait, I'll who ask are you questions. again? Who are you oh, again? Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay, you have to say your, yeah. Wait, give your intro, clap, and then. I think I mentioned this when we first met, but you did this interview with Bobby Chu where you were talking about seeing a part in a movie that you don't like, and then you go home and you're fueled with anger, so you just reboard the whole thing <laughs> as to what you wish happened. Yeah. And <laughs> I really love... <laughs> I really love that mindset of not waiting for permission and doing it yourself. I'd mm. love to know how you developed that mindset and what it means to you. That's interesting. Yeah, I think uh, I think a lot of art stuff can't doesn't work like it as as uh, waiting for permission. I think you just have to do stuff. So. Um, you understand this great. So uh, the idea that look, if you're gonna do it, just do it. Like uh, you don't you don't necessarily have to you know uh, wait for permission from the world. You can kind of you know uh, you know as you, their example is kind of like funny because it's like eh, it's a little like uh, you know angry. But on the other side of that, like there's definitely been movies where I felt like inspired to like work on something and then you just go and you start making stuff uh and i think a lot of times you just have to kind of get your hands dirty you just have to do it and that's how you learn uh there's something to definitely like like getting in there um you know that's like you can talk about it and uh and kind of like fantasize about it but like the minute that you really kind of dive in is when you start to kind of like really see what it what it can be and uh I think, I think asking for permission, uh, you know, you're, you're kind of like a lot of times you just have to like be okay with giving yourself permission to do stuff. I think that mindset, um, has been with me for a while. Um, do you I feel, sorry how, for interrupting. Do oh yeah, you feel like you were, I don't know, born with that mindset or did you have to build it up yourself? Yeah, I think I think what what it comes down to is sometimes I I will wait like I feel like I'm waiting for position or permission from someone and then really I'm just kind of like waiting for permission from myself and uh, I so I think uh, I think I I was for the most part born with it I guess I I, I don't I don't remember like really learning but I just I do remember being just okay to like to make things and create things always kind of like a need to create a lot of artists are like this right so like you're you like to draw a lot so you're gonna draw all through you know class and school and things like that um i don't i don't you know even if you know you don't necessarily have like the permission to do to make like a like an art like art piece at home um you know, for, like you could, you could still, I was still constantly like making stuff, You're just making stuff, making stuff. I don't know if that answers that question. Probably not at all. It's very interesting. No, 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 it's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, what am I trying to say? 
Yeah. What is it more like? Uh, so when you so you're saying like some people will kind of like wait to see if like someone will like give them a chance yeah, at something, sure. right? Yeah. Uh, uh, like just do it. Like I I yeah. and I I feel like I've kind of always been in that mode. Um, that I think like once I convince myself that I'll I'll do it, I'll just kind of do it. Um, it usually turns out. Uh, in a good way it's not like it's not like you always get every like you get lots of rejections if you're trying to go for jobs or if you're trying to um make something that's maybe like too big out of your mindset but uh i think there's there's always something to be learned by like by trying to make stuff and just allowing yourself to do it yeah for sure i feel like that's the hardest uh that's why i wanted to do this uh series about fear getting the permission from yourself is literally like personally the hardest thing to do because mm. i think most of us are like how you said we're born kids don't care what they're doing they just scribble on walls and stuff they don't care if it's good it's all fine yeah 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 you know as you grow up you kind of learn from other people all of that gets into you and you start like doubting yourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. did that happen for you it must have happened Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure it happens to everyone. Mm -hmm. Those doubts always like live in your head. Mm -hmm. What do you do to tell them to <laughs> leave? <laughs> Disappear. <laughs> Disappear. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I, I mean, I, I think that's sometimes why uh, people stop drawing or or do you know because they don't they see it as some element of oh you know i i think it has a lot to do with like societal stuff like oh there's so many more people that are better than i am or people have told me that you can never get a job doing this type of thing or you, you, you know like that's a waste of time why would you do that that's just your imagination uh all those all those things kind of end up kind of like sitting around and it's usually like from other uh like societal issues but i think i think it's just uh you know you power through for like what you want to do you kind of like you look at you know your own your own process i guess i would say that you don't have um So there's all these doubts. There are all these doubts that are kind of like hanging out over your head. And so when you what you'd want to do is you'd want to like push them out by uh, kind of like finding your kind of like center almost, you know, almost like a like a practice of like, but I you know like is this what I really like to do? Is this what I really want to do? Um, of course, everyone kind of has doubts and they they hang out in there, but. Uh, a lot of the a lot of times those doubts prove to be kind of wrong especially if you if you're like if you, if you know push through you're like oh i don't this is going to be awkward i don't want to talk to this person or i don't want to ask this person for help or uh, i don't i don't want to make this um thing no one's going to like it but i think if you like it you can uh you know you just have to really be like like true to yourself like finding like what you like that answer made no sense. No, it did. It's like a, I. <laughs> what do you mean it didn't make sense? No, I'm doubting. <laughs> well, don't you feel like don't you ever feel like um, you hear those doubts in your head? Sometimes the doubts kind of like uh, you just have to decide whether or not they're doubts from you or they're doubts from what you perceive to be like other people's doubts. Um, because you'll find worthwhile stuff to do and to make, uh, you know, in very unlikely places. And I don't, uh, you know, some people have like a really, really strong vision for something and you just have to kind of follow that, see if that, if that's good. It's again, it's like, it kind of comes back to what you're saying, like passion, uh, fear. It's like those emotions are the things that you're looking for. So I don't know if you're going to, it's not going to be really great to like logically combat emotional stuff. I think you have to, um, you know, really kind of like lean into your passions. It sounds like you're very uh, grounded then. You keep reminding yourself of 
why you enjoy that thing you do. That yeah, I'm, I'm really... probably not grounded because I have to keep reminding myself of <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, it's more than most people do, which is very good. But that is very important because um, I think I was talking about this with Noor. Mm -hmm. She was talking about how even if you fail or even if you succeed, it doesn't matter because your reason for doing it is so strong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How did you do that? I guess that's what <laughs> I'm trying to think of a better question than how did you do that? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That's such a good skill to develop. How did you, was there a time in your career or in your life where you weren't sure of yourself or what you wanted to do? Mm -hmm. And now at this point in time, what would you tell that person, your younger self who didn't know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, you're, it's difficult because you were a different person at that time. And so you probably needed different things than you, or words of encouragement that you do now. Cause it's, it's, you know, hindsight's so in hindsight, so easy to see like, Oh God, why did you struggle so hard with that for so long? Like, why didn't you get here? But I think that journey is the thing that kind of makes you um, more complete or at least who you are in like the present form. And so uh, I guess if I were going to go back and I was going to talk to myself, uh, I would just say, uh, make your own stuff, you know, make your own, like, don't, like we were talking about, like with the jobs, like don't, you know, don't, don't dig around for jobs. To, like, I know, I know you want to eat. I know you're, you know, I was working at Target. And so I think, uh, you know, uh, but at the same time, I can't help but think like, uh, I had to, I, I just, you know, just like relax, make your own art, like build up your, your portfolio, the way that you want to make it. And, and, uh, like show your, your true colors, like through that artwork. And then that will get you the better um, positions that you want. Because the minute you get, like, if you, if you think everyone wants to see ducks, uh, you know, swimming in a, you know, whatever, in a, in a, in a little like uh, pond and you just draw, but you don't like it and you, but you just fill up your portfolio with ducks and ponds. They're going to hire you to draw ducks and ponds. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't want to do that. You want to do stuff that you want to do. Cause like the minute that you're like, I love whatever I love, you know, uh, giant robots. And so the minute that someone's like, shoot, we need someone to do giant robots. It's like, here I am, you know, like that's, that's like hopefully the best like way to work. Like ideally that would work. Like sometimes of course you like, Oh, it's not giant robots. It's giant lizards. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, you know, like, Oh, I can do that too. So, but, uh, I don't think it's a one for one, but I think that those elements of kind of like staying true to yourself, those things is, are, are the, the, the pieces that I would like to convey to myself as a younger person. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. What do you, why do you think you're drawn to the things that you do then? What makes it like a core part of yourself? Is it something just in you? Great question. I mean, there's so many factors. Um, you know, the this is like the nature nurture question, right? So like, what are you born yeah. with? Like your inherent pieces of yourself. And then what are the things that you uh, were taught in society? I grew up in California. It's like surfing and skateboarding and, um, you know, uh, Western culture and capitalism and, you know, like all those kind of like the things like end up kind of like feeding into who you are. Right. So like, cause, mm -hmm. well, cause you, 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 you live in, in this, in this world. And so like those things are like, like big elements of, uh, of like what's kind of like shaped you. Like, how do you kind of parse that apart? Are you able to tell me that you can tell me what part of you is extremely like, human to your core something from like that you were born with versus something that you learned over time like i don't know if you can really kind of break those things apart yeah. uh I, I think we try and i think um you know but uh 
there's 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 definitely things that I think are working subconsciously against you know are, are you know a, like allowing you to like really kind of like analyze those things. So. Um, you know, analyzing those things, I, I really enjoy. I really like looking at like, oh, what's, you know, what, what kind of makes up a person uh, at, the, at the philosophical level? Like, how do these things like come together? But I don't, I don't know if you can really uh, piece them apart, like why or how they came to be. Yeah. Wow, that's like a very introspective well, answer. That's going to keep me up tonight. So. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, that reminds right. me of, <laughs> in a good way, yeah. um, you know, like those existential crises you have at like 3 a.m. In a good yeah. way. Yeah. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. That reminds me of that thing in uh, Soul where, I don't know if I'll put this in, if this is a spoiler, but it's yeah. just about how you're not really, maybe you're born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline, but it's yeah, just yeah. like living <laughs> in life. Like that's the whole goal. I love that. Yeah. It's yeah, very, very yeah, yeah. I think I mean, anytime you try to dive in, like you know, for Soul, I'm, I'm sure they looked at that question and looked at that question, right? Like our movies go through so many cycles of changes, and you know, what does this mean? What's the point of life? Like, what's the meaning of life? Uh, everyone's looking for this. This is like the question that everyone wants to answer, um, but it's fleeting. It's like something you can't really hold on to, and so like it, it has like a uh, ethereal element to it that you can't really uh be like this is it you know yeah uh you know maybe after you know if you're van gogh and you passed away and then people can look back and be like that guy wanted to be a painter right or something but like it's only an after the the fact and so it's something that um it's 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 like holding a bunch of sand in your hands and if you squeeze like too hard it starts going through your fingers and you just want to hold it like kind of light uh and uh, as much as you can you know so like it doesn't kind of like uh squeeze through and, and if you have if you i think if you i think that is a very frustrating aspect of it but it's also like a wonderful aspect because then you're always going to learn more right like you're always it's changing it's moving around that thing that you're going to point at that's like the point of life you know it's ethereal it's different for everyone it's it's kind of like it's mystical and it's um it's alive too you know yeah that's for sure it. it's very very interesting um what is something you failed at like you had all these doubts and fears but you actually failed at it what happened after what is it was it as bad as you thought it was gonna be um no I, yeah that's great i mean everyone kind of feels that way like when you really fail at something uh sure you might feel really bad about it at first maybe you give yourself a couple days to not to you know console yourself things like that but it always turns out as like a an interesting learning experience of some kind uh and a lot and a lot of times you're like better for it you know the the key is to kind of like if you don't have that center part if you don't kind of like build that center part of yourself then i, I think you are kind of like and you're trying all this stuff uh you can always go back to that center part right uh and and uh and if, if you and if you fail you can go back to that center part and it's still you're still there you're still you um you know, if you, like, I hurt my ankle really bad, like, right before running, like, the uh, marathon, I wasn't able to run the marathon. It was, like, really upsetting because I spent half a year of terrible Saturdays dr running millions of miles to try to train for this thing, and then I didn't want to, you know, then I heard it, like, right before, and I, I think that just those elements just end up being, like, oh, okay, well, you know, what am I going to learn from this? And my, what I'm going to learn is I'm going to take care of my ankle and I'm going to like work on uh you know maybe like some physical therapy on my ankle to kind of like get it to you know fix better and uh knock on wood knock on wood my ankle's doing better Yay! Uh, <laughs> but it's just like you know uh it's like well now like part of the process of me working on myself is I know that I have to work on doing these stupid ankle exercises every morning you know uh, but you know like those kind of things like building yourself up to kind of like 
uh, to do the things that you knew you knew you wanted to do. And then maybe if I did those ankle exercises all the time, like I was supposed to before I went for that run and hurt myself, maybe I would be in a better position. But since I, you know, since like that didn't happen, like it, it becomes this big failure. And so it's like, all right, cool. Well, just go back to yourself, work on yourself. You'll be fine. Like, you know, um, and, um, failing is, is great in a lot of ways because it can teach you those things. But if I think as long as you, as long as, as long as you kind of like build yourself up from the from the inside and then like going outward, um, projecting how like you want, like you want your world to be, cause that's really all you can really control. You can kind of control your feelings about things. You can control how much time you spend on different things. Um, but if you if you control those things then the failures aren't as painful if they're you know i'm not gonna if you put all of your weight into something or somebody else liking you and they reject you or mm -hmm. uh trying to get a job or something and they reject and they get rejected then like it's really painful but you just have to know that like just go back to yourself and 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 build on yourself and then those you know you can fail a lot of times and it's just not as it's not as uh diminishing for you that's very good advice. Actually, um, the comics that you made while you broke your ankle, yeah. uh, personally, like they're so like real, obviously because it happened to you. But yeah, that's like one of my favorite things on your Instagram. <laughs> oh, great! Yeah, cool. Yeah. So I know, you made I'm like... art out of pain. Okay, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yes. And uh, my my shirt has gotten darker. There we go. Over time. Uh, Yes, I uh, I actually worked on a project with a friend who filmed this entire project. He was a film major and he wanted to do this huge film project and he worked on all this stuff and it was very moody. It was in college and uh, you know we uh, it was very much like um, you know like oh I'm gonna try these things. We went to this like botanical garden and filmed all this different stuff and he was using this very cool camera that he was just recently acquired and wasn't really good at using it and uh <laughs> by this we filmed for like a whole day and then the next day he's like dude i like i forgot to take the lens cap off oh, no. <laughs> like the, there oh was like a, there was like some inner lens thing that just like so the whole thing was like eight hours of black basically oh. and uh it's like oh okay cool he's like can we do it again yeah but the second time you know it only took us like two hours and we got through it like really quick so sometimes it's good to go through you know a project a lot of times when people say oh you know my photoshop file crashed or my 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 project crashed uh you know sometimes it's a good thing because like they're like oh but i went back in and i actually made it a lot better and it only took me like half the time you know? yeah it's really good advice that's like <laughs> i definitely relate to that i've um I think you mentioned something about getting outside your comfort zone and trying like different aspects of the same thing. Mm -hmm. I've been getting into like live action. I've definitely done that because, <laughs> you know, in animation it's so simple. You can just draw your background, draw your actors. You don't yeah. need anything. But yeah. in real life, that's so much stuff is out of your control. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's almost like one is a, a really intense like oil painting and. And that's like animation where there's no mistakes like everything you do is super intentional in every frame you know every frame was like completely intentional and then live action is like almost like watercolor where you can kind of get like happy accidents where like colors like match together and then they become like a, you know like a, an interesting color that you didn't really expect but it has like a good effect on it and so uh you know you put a camera on a good actor uh or a good uh you know some funny actors or a bunch of different things and you can get a lot of footage so it's like really really funny and really cool but you know you have all this like so you have all this stuff and it's kind of like these happy accents it's like magic appears uh, you know some of your favorite actors and actresses i'm sure like you you feel that where they really are like some sort of like pulling out some sort of magic out of the camera and um and it's and it's beautiful and it's um it's it's romantic because it's it's like it, it just happened there and if you were there for it it's like this incredible experience uh, and animation you know um maybe you know a little less romantic maybe a little bit more like uh, tied down 
Uh, everything you do is not uh, um, accidental. You're really trying to like do everything in with intention and very intentional. And so it's hard to get some of those like kind of like accidents in there. So sometimes you you know you would get uh, you wouldn't you won't get a lot of like spontaneity out of it do you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah i think it's because um i think you've heard me talk about this before that the editing process has to happen in animation first right so storyboards uh you know uh, like at pixar at every big uh animation company they make a, they have an entire pipeline of 3d animation they make all the different assets they build the layouts you know, they rig, they model the characters, they texture everything, they light it, they animate it, they yeah. rig, you know, all these all these different pieces and they go into it. But they can't do that unless they have the film edited first. And so uh, it's just too expensive. So if you if you were going to be like, I'm going to film, you know, a story about these two cats that are like walking through the park. Well, if you were doing it in live action, you'd probably have some animal tamers and, and trainers and you'd probably get some, try to get some cat shots of like, you know, like them, but you'd have like a whole bunch of like footage of cats like running through a park. And then later you would take all that footage, probably like hours and hours of footage. And then you would, you know, edit it down to, you know, a short film, like 10 minutes, or you'd edit it down to a feature film, but in animation, you have to do all the editing first. It's just too expensive to animate everything and then cut things out that you don't want. So uh, it's it's very much more um, a little a little stringent in a, and 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 strict in like in how the the process is made. So like everything you see in animation, it's like that was on purpose. That was on purpose. You know, and sometimes you see like those Easter egg videos of like did Pixar know that they oh they totally knew they know. <laughs> They know every little pixel. Some of those people are just watching like little pixels of things, uh, and uh, and and all that is incredibly intentional. Wow, that's very interesting. I remember uh, being obsessed with like YouTube channels like Super Carlin Brothers when I was younger. That would go uh -huh. into like the Pixar theory and yeah, all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. fantastic. Um, I'm wondering. You seem like you have a lot of experience, or you seem like you've dabbled in live action as well. Um, how was that for you? How did you get started on that? Uh, it's good. It is mostly, uh, to be honest, I, I did go through to animation and and uh, and I am primarily in animation work, but I've done some uh, storyboarding for live action, which has been cool. And uh, uh, you know, I, I story and I storyboarded on some kind of like smaller projects that were filmed, uh, like a music video, things like that, and a lot of that stuff. Um, it's filmed over like a weekend, so it's really high energy, mm -hmm. um, and uh, it requires a, a huge coordination of people. And so that's what's also like kind of romantic about it, right? You get there at like 8 a.m., and then your you know your AD, your art, uh, your your uh, assistant director like comes out, and they're just like, you know, all right, this is what's going on today. We're gonna film this over here. We're gonna film this over here. Is that set up? Okay, we're gonna, you better set that up because we're gonna be over there right at 11.15 and we gotta shoot and we gotta do it right now. And then we're gonna do this and we're gonna do that. All right, go. And then everyone, you know, like runs around and then they like, everyone's trying to do everything. And, and um, I was, uh, because it was like a friend's project, I did some storyboards, but then I was also cool. like, hey, can I come work on the, like, I wanna be like a PA, like a, you know, production assistant. I wanna just, I'll, I'll be there to help out whatever you guys want, right? So of course, like we're doing ridiculous stuff and um, it's, it's crazy. There was one shot that we wanted to do where we had to put a green screen up in the corner. Uh, and and uh, so the, the um, uh the gaffer and the best boy which is like the kind of like they do like a lot of like various things that they they got in there and they're like all right let's build this rig they built a rig and they they and they put the green screen up behind us but the green screen was fabric and so it was like really wrinkled and so uh they you know they're like we, we were like oh it's kind of wrinkled and in the light you can kind of see the wrinkles and that's hard to you want the green screen to be very flat like behind you if you're going to do green screen and so the the effects guy came and he's like oh man this is not going to do like that's not going to do well like can you guys take that thing down and iron it and then we were like yeah let's take it down but then 
uh, you know, the, the gaffer looks at it and he's like, dude, we, we spent all this time putting that up. You can't take that down. Plus, we only have like 15 minutes before we have to like shoot here. So it's done. Like, it's just going to be green like that. And so we're like, OK, uh, here's what we're going to do. And so uh, I had one guy hold an ironing board vertical on the other side of the thing. And I took an iron and I ironed like this and we're ironing, like trying to get all the wrinkles out of this thing, but it's like flat on the on the, on the the side of a wall. And oh like the gosh. AD is like sticking her head out the door and she's like, we're gonna be there in 10 minutes to shoot. You have 10 minutes. And they're like, you know, it's just, but it's just a lot of fun, you know? Oh my gosh, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, that's so interesting. You're definitely like in, wow, that what a story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, I, think, I think a lot of, uh, you know, the other thing about live action that I've done before is uh, like, you know, like in storyboarding for live action, um, because I come from animation, sometimes I'll forget. And so I'll do something where like a dog does a little twirl or something, or the dog like is able to twirl and then like run over here. And, uh, and so I, I just draw that, you know, and not really thinking about it in animation, you can do anything, right? So I just draw the dot, you know, and I, I turn the, I, I send all these boards in and they, you know, they take them and they're like, great. And then they're, they said, we're going to shoot reshoots based on these boards. Cause it was like, kind of like scenes that were going to be put into the movie. And then when we saw the shots come back, um, they were like, oh, uh, I was like, oh, it's a different dog. And they're like, yeah, with the dog that we had couldn't swirl around. And so we had to fire that dog and get another dog. And I was like, I got a dog fired? Oh I'm the gosh. worst person in the world. <laughs> but it was oh like, uh, but it was so amazing because it was just like, they just did, you know, it, like your drawings and you're like, maybe this shot, maybe this shot. And then they built it. They built it all. They're like, oh, we don't have a truck like that. Go buy or rent a truck, put it in the background right there, you know? Oh, we don't have mud right here. All right. Like, some like a crew has to like dig it out make it like a muddy area you know like you like it it's wild because it's uh and I, you know I, I wasn't on the set for those reshoots but i really wish i was because you know it is so fun and entertaining and they said it was like really raining that day and so uh they uh weren't able to they had to build like an insane tarp over the whole thing just it's just moving moving and it's it's just like it's very much like on the fly you're making these choices right there's so many creative problem solving you have to be really good at that yeah yeah which seems you know what i mean it's like so cool and you have to be very present and observing everything it's it seems like a lot of fun and uh and uh and and you and energetic and you have to be a critical thinker and problem solver in a lot of ways um animation same thing but you know you, you know, I'm, I'm a story artist. So if you're the director, you give me pages and I go think, you know, we talk about them and we talk about where, what should happen in this scene. Maybe it's like three or four pages. Then I go back to my little office, right? And I, I sit in complete isolation and I have to figure everything out, but I can plan it all out from the, from the ground up. Right. And so I can do all the work and plan everything out. And then based on what I've planned, I can like show that. And so, um, in that way it's it's very much like a more like internal process right i don't have to deal with like a gaffer and a, an ad and a, you know the director and the actors and all this stuff i don't have to deal with all that all of those major things like happening all at once i can just uh like kind of like i i'm kind of i am those people if i'm the storyboard artist so you're kind of like a little bit of all those people like working but in isolation so yeah, a little sure. less romantic i would say <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's so hard. Like, um, one of my early projects I did, I filmed a live action music video on my own. It's so hard even to make something bad yeah. in live action because it takes it's, so much planning. Because I storyboarded it all out, like how you said, but I didn't yeah. think about how that translates in real life, the kind no of way. stuff that you need. Yeah, you made a music video? Yeah, I did. I It's... It's fully edited. It's color yeah. graded and everything. It'll never see the light of day because wow. it just didn't work out. Yeah. Wow. 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 Color graded and everything. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. Not well. But it's, still <laughs> it's still, you still did it. That's great. But yeah. that's the, but that's the kind of thing that we were talking about with like getting your hands in there and, and moving things around. Right. Like you, you learned so much from doing that stuff. And, oh, definitely. Um, it's it like so feeds beneficial. into each other. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm curious, what happy accidents, you said that they like edit it all, so it's so precise, right, in animation? 
Yeah. How do happy accidents happen in animation then? Ooh, I think you just have to be um, okay. You have to be a, a little bit okay with it being a little bit loose. I'm not sure in, um, I, I guess I can only speak really to the storyboard aspect of it, but if you're, if you're an animator, you know, and you're, you have like a model and you're, it's trying to like, you're trying to like rig the model. So like it's in a certain pose and things like that. You're very distinct and specific, right? So it's difficult to get any kind of, um, energy out of it. Uh, that's spontaneous. Some people will, uh, draw over their scene, um, on in like in 2d, like, you know, and they'll draw the poses. And they're rough, right? But in that roughness, you can kind of get some of that spontaneity and energy out. And uh, it's really like it's it's fascinating to watch, right? So ultimately, we build all these. We it's funny because like in storyboarding, it's like it's this two D black and white drawing, you know. The the simp like the only reason why like it's it's so simple is just it's just the easiest way to get some acting in there, some like composition some movement, whatever you need to do in stories, and then get it to the editing department, right? So uh, that's that. But then the entire process of the pipeline of animation is now we build all these things in 3D, we light them, we rig them, just like we were saying before, we put all this stuff together. And then weirdly, it becomes 2D again and becomes like a flat surface, right? And so when you watch it in the movie theater, you're watching a big two-dimensional two screen. And so, um, where once they kind of settle where the camera is going to be and let's say you're the animator and you're going to work on it one of the options that you have is to actually just take some oh, there's various programs that do this but you can draw your animation over the the shot that you have and you can just draw your and so some people will just draw their animation and then they will take the because it, like there's kind of like an energy that comes out of that and then they will take their their model and they will match it to the the po the drawings so yeah, that's kind I remember of like how seeing this... that i'm oh, sorry i remember oh, yeah. seeing that in like zootopia yeah i'm sure yeah D uh disney always is doing that right uh if you look at um gr there's lots of great stuff with glenn Keane drawing over uh like stuff in tangled like he like he's like oh look at this like maybe you can make this stronger by putting this like there's some amazing artists that do that type of thing uh still oh, at Pixar. Sure. it's just incredible and they're just uh it's a it's a treat it's such a treat to have um some of these masters like even in storyboarding sometimes we'll have them come in and they'll just like look over our storyboards and be like yeah, yeah, yeah you know uh, push this right here and it's just like the tiniest little effect and you're like oh my god it made it so much better <laughs> like how did you do that you're a magician you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely that's so cool <laughs> um last time we were talking about you were talking about um your struggles and how you live as the person you want to be, kind of. Mm -hmm. That's how you remind hmm. yourself of who you are. So I'm yeah. wondering, um, that kind of reminded me of like living slightly in the future somehow. Mm -mm. So mm -hmm. I'd love to know more mm -hmm. about that. Gosh, yeah. Well, that's a, I mean, it's hard. It's a hard question to kind of like grapple with because, uh, I think if you want to live too far in the future, then you're not enjoying like what you're doing right now. Yeah, how do you stay you know? present? You seem very yeah. present. I try. I try. I mean, it's it's uh because of isolation, it's been a little bit weird and easy to like uh, to stay present because you're trapped with yourself. You really are, right? So, you know, my introvert friends are they're having they're fine. You know, a lot of them are okay and we'll like, you know, we'll like We'll, we'll do casual zoom meetings and hangouts just like you know but just real casual and they're all like yeah yeah i'm fine whatever i'm playing video games or i'm working on my project or i'm reading i'm i'm fine don't bother me my my extrovert friends are just like oh remember when we could go get coffee uh, and it's just like they're like remember this and it's just like yes man like uh but you know uh just stay safe you know and we'll get there again one day and so um you know, I, I feel like I definitely have some extrovert tendencies and I just have to kind of like quell those at this point. Um, but I think, uh, I think, I think what I'm finding currently, if I was going to talk about like my current mindset, I would say that 
if I, um, how do I stay present? I stay present by um, giving myself time to just have, like, enjoy things, right? Like, uh, if I, if I, let's say I'm like, okay, I'm going to wake up at five and from five to five 30, I'm going to get up and take my vitamins and drink, you know, 16 fluid ounces of water. And then uh, at five 30, I'm going to go for a run and I'm going to run for 45 minutes. And then I'm going to, you know, whatever, take a shower. Then after that, I'm going to read, you know, for this long. And then, uh, if, and then at, you know, at, at this and at this and at this. And I, I think, I think for me, if I do that, then I'm thinking about, I, I, I find myself thinking about like the next steps too much and I feel like I'm not having fun, you know, like, cause sometimes you're like, oh, oh, this run is awful. And you should just be totally fine to be like, I'm going to go home. I, you know, whatever. I'm going to cut this run short. I'm done. I don't want to run today. That's fine. And that that's what it's kind of like, kind of like, you know, but like sometimes you're like, I love running. Oh, this is amazing. I could run for another hour. Well, shoot, I will. I'll just run for it, you know, like a, you like have like a, you got to allow yourself to kind of like have a little bit of flexibility in your time frame of what you're, what you're doing. And so I think, uh, you know, work is, you know, when work comes up, there's a schedule, there's a calendar, right? And you have like all these meetings and they're like half an hour to an hour. And, um, you know, sometimes like your, your calendar can get overwhelming, but you got to give yourself like room to like, some meetings should be able to stretch for a while. Some meetings should, it's like, oh, this meeting is only 10 minutes and that's it. Yeah, good. That's totally fine. We don't need to talk about anything else. Goodbye. You know, and uh, uh, you just have to kind of like go with the flow. So I think that's kind of how I stay present. Just kind of like looking at yourself and how are you feeling as you're doing these tasks? You know, you plan for the future. You try to do a good job, but uh, you know, let's say like you have like six tasks, you know, in your crazy setup of like i'm being the most well-rounded person in the world i'm gonna do music for one hour and i'm gonna do this for one hour and I'm, I'm gonna you know work out for one hour and i'm gonna draw for one hour and then i'm gonna and at a certain point you can just make yourself nuts and i think uh you're not having fun or you're even like really enjoying it you know what i mean and so it's just like although like sure there's benefits to being like oh i didn't want to run but i pushed through and i got you know it's like great you know but at the same time you just want to like enjoy life and i think that's just kind of like the balance because there's no this is it like this is like this is the life this is what you're doing this is your life and so uh you know you're stuck with yourself you you bring yourself everywhere you go so if you like i think just kind of like thinking about it in that way you know, there's a lot of ways to do that. People use like mindfulness tactics. Meditation is a good one. You know, just like focusing on your breathing, things like that. So there's a lot of ways to kind of like try to stay as present as you can. Um, I do have some friends that just are like, you know, oh, it's, it's 1045. And so I have to go and, um, and they, have to, you know, they're like almost like it's like 10 minute intervals of their whole life. And I'm just like, eh, but like, you know, give your where's like the room for you just to like hang out and let kind of like spontaneity come in because if you know how it is like if you sit down and you're like from 10 30 to 11 30 is when i'm creative it's not gonna it almost never works that way <laughs> yeah for sure that's something that um personally i'm actually just learning now so it's very interesting that you bring that up um by the time this interview will be out maybe that i actually made a whole video on that Oh, great. There but you yeah, go. That's something I'm just learning. That's fantastic. And I think Austin Cleon uh, talks about it in his book, uh, Keep Going, too. Hmm. That is like so important. I cannot stress that, especially yeah. like not only like the benefits of you feel like you're actually like living your life, you're not comparing yourself to others. Mm -hmm. And you're totally right. There has to be that kind of Real life is surprises. You can't mm -hmm. like plan for it. That's very, mm -hmm. very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could try. I mean, like, you know, you don't want to have, it's this weird balance, right? You don't want to have no plan, like, but you kind of want to have, allow yourself to be like, wow, this is really great. Or this is really working. I'm going to make more time for this. Or, um, you know, I, I'm going to go with this and, and or, you know, oh, uh, running's not working anymore for me. All right, well, l let me try something else. You know, let me, let me try you know, rowing or kicking a soccer ball around or something like that. Do you find that that 
um, that all, even if you do like running for like two weeks and then you stop because you hate it forever, yeah. do you find that that still like feeds into the other aspects of your life? Yeah, I think so. I think, uh, uh, everything has like that, those elements to it. It's very, it's very rare that you'll find someone that will be like, uh, you know, drawing's painful to me today, you know? I don't want to draw today. Every drawing I do, it's terrible. I worked with this amazing story artist. He's like a legend. He like directed six films and he's so good. And he, uh, I just remember one day he came into my office when we were at all working and it was like maybe 11 in the morning. And he's like, I'm going home. I can't draw today. I can't, all my drawings are terrible. And I'm like, wow. And I, but like, he, you know, he's a little bit older and I was like, 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 oh my gosh, it, that never goes away. You never, you never get to the point where, uh, like, you're just going to be like stable and there's not going to be like any, like, f like emotional relation to this thing. It's always going to be like, I can't draw today. Your drawings are probably just as good as they were yesterday, but for some reason you're in the mindset or whatever it is, that's kind of like pulling you out of it. Right. Sometimes, of course, you got to push through sometimes for sure but like it's really great to be like um <laughs> if you're one of those people that's like wow i think you know staying present is like ah i really don't want to draw today my drawings are very painful maybe my drawings will get a lot better or i'll feel a lot better about them if i take a day off you know things like that yeah for sure actually when i first um uh, one of the first times that we talked that that exact point like blew my mind because you were talking about your uh how your dreams changed as you went through this career and that stuff mm -hmm. and what you're focusing on now. Yeah. That like is, it's comforting for sure. Yes. But at the same time, it's like, oh man, <laughs> never, <laughs> it never goes away. But I yeah. think definitely, like right. you've yeah, definitely you've... gotten better at like dealing with it because you've had a ton of experience with. Right. Well, so it's, it's, exactly. Is it like, uh, it, it, it's exactly what you're saying. Like, uh, and you'll, it's like, you go through stages in your life where you're like, I'll never figure it out. This is a nightmare. This is awful, right? Oh my gosh. Like it keeps going on forever. There's no end to it. This is it. And then, um, you'll flip and you'll be on the other side of it. And, uh, you know, have you ever, do you know the myth of Sisyphus where the guy's like, uh, it's a ancient Greek story and he's pushing the rock up the mountain, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, uh, there's been lots of philosophical arguments about is Sisyphus happy? Is Sisyphus sad? You know, but uh, it's a metaphor for essentially like we're pushing this rock up a mountain just to see it fall down to the end of, you know, at the end of the day. And you have to push it back up. And that's kind of like like your your deal. And so, like, can you find happiness within that process? And that's kind of like what we're kind of like you know i think that's what we're talking about because like you're looking at that and you're like oh man i'll never get there but at the same time you're like oh oh i'm so happy that there's there will never be i'll never get there because if i get there there's nothing else right and uh and so that thought's kind of scary as well yeah for sure i think austin cleon also talks about that you know like the movie groundhog day yeah about how every right. day is the same and yeah. what do you do once you exhaust all that yeah. That's wonderful because it definitely shifts your priorities. Like yeah. how you were saying, um, when you were talking about um, the art you create, like when it's truly like fearless, is usually just the fun stuff. And you mentioned um, it's not about like how the drawing turns out, it's about like the process of actually doing it. Mm -hmm. Which I think is fantastic because I think that's what happens. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Ultimately, uh, when you you know, when you work on their projects, uh, you'll remember working on them and you'll remember, you know, editing videos late at night or color grading on a music video, you know, and you, you have all these ideas and, but you'll remember working on them and you'll remember the people that you worked with too. Right. So those things end up being really powerful over time because, um, that's, what's magical, like that kind of big aspect of it. I, and, I, and, it, and it's, so it's 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 good to kind of remember those things. Of you, of course, you want your projects to be good, but you know, I've had I've definitely had friends that have worked on movies that like didn't really turn out so great, but they always they're like that was the best 
experience of my life. It was awesome. It was so fun. And we had so much fun working on it. Didn't we? Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, dude, that was so cool. When you did that one pitch that you did, you know, they talk like that. And so you have this, uh, you're like, wow, you know, I want to work on a bad project that's fun. <laughs> I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's definitely, <laughs> it's like not about the result anymore. It's about your life, you, what mm -hmm. you get out of it. Yeah. Is there a project or something that you're putting off because of fear? Yes, absolutely. There's definitely projects that I <sighs> definitely have to wrap my head around. And so they sit in my to-do list and they stare at me and they're awful. And, uh, um, but it's kind of like what we were talking about. You know, I could definitely take a little of my own advice here and I could say that I should probably, you know, start getting my hands dirty and start digging around to kind of just like see like what comes out. Um, you know, I think, I think you want everything to work like clockwork. You want, you're like, okay, here's a, here's a project and I'm going to work on it for six hours and then it's done. And then I'm, I turned it in. Great. Uh, maybe there's, uh, if you can do that, that's awesome. But I think, you know, a lot of times it's like, you have to really just let go of a lot of schedule and things like that. And just like start digging in and just have fun and see, see how, kind of like how far you can go. There's definitely projects that are, um, weirdly kind of like small in stature like i owe someone a drawing right let's say like i owe some, like i owe a friend a drawing and then i'm just i don't know why but like it's just like i i like it's kind of like i keep putting it off so i guess i have to kind of ask myself why i'm putting it off um and you know actually just talking about this right now it feels like therapy and i'm just like oh yeah why am i putting that off i could probably do that today you know but i i think i think those things are there i think you just have to spend time with them and then they become a little bit less scary what do you think um makes you put it off is it because um for me personally when i put stuff off even if i really want to work on it it's mm -hmm. because i'm afraid of it turning out terrible or I'm afraid of putting so much of myself into that. Do you relate to that at all? Or is there yeah. anything like that? Yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah, you don't want it to be terrible. Um, and so it takes time to, uh, I was, I was working on this drawing and then I was talking to a friend on the phone and I was, you know, I was like, uh, I don't really like it. I, uh, you know, and he's just like, dude, then why are you doing it? Like, this is like your free time, you know? Like, why are you putting this? Like, and so looking at that and like listening to that, which is, you know, great to talk to friends if you have those friends that are, that can, can help you with that. It's just like, all right, I just need to kick stuff around until I, I like it again. Um, but I, you know, I, so I probably need to change my mind on whatever it is drastically to make it something that I want to do. You know, oh, I think I need to, like a head change or like I need to like look at it from a different angle. And that's what like friends can help you with a lot better than sometimes when you're like mired in it, you know, they can help you like look at it from a different angle. And then because of that, you can kind of like change your view of it. And then it could be like way more entertaining or inspiring. Um, and you're, you're kind of like looking for that. Yeah, for sure. Do you, um, are you like, it seems like you're like half an introvert and half an extrovert. Like yeah. you definitely have the qualities of like introspection, but you also lean on your friends. I'm wondering, mm -hmm. yeah, that definitely seems like it affects your work and how you um, do that. Mm. Did you have anyone who helped you and encouraged you to overcome fear or that you learned that from? Hmm. 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 Yeah, I think. I've had some really great gurus like in my life, you know what I mean? Like friends or, or, uh, like mentors, right. Mentor, uh, people or people that had some mentor aspects of that, that were able to, uh, push me in the right direction. Uh, one, one was, um, a creative director I had, and he was terrific at pushing, uh, on really big ideas. He wanted me to think about really big ideas. Um, it wasn't really about like, uh, it's like, here's your work. You know, I was working, um, uh, at a, at a gaming company at the same, at, a, at the time. And I was an art director and it's like, here's your work. 
but I also want you to look at these questions, these five questions. And they were like big questions, like what's the next step for this whole process? Uh, what's a, what's a better way to, uh, who can I talk to outside of this circle that can like open my mind about this, this process. And so those things ended up being like kind of philosophical questions that were really good to kind of like open up different avenues of looking at what I was doing instead of getting so mired in it all the time. Um, yeah, those people usually kind of like show up kind of like organically, you know, you'll talk to someone, you'll have a connection to them, uh, and you'll kind of like be on the same page. And when you're on the same page, it's like, it's incredible. Cause like, uh, you know, you can really kind of like, they can really kind of like help you or help you read that. And so, you know, like read yourself, um, get, get to goals that you didn't even really think that you were like, were on the horizon, you know? Do you find yourself trying to be that for other people? I think so. I think it's also, it's just like a, it's a natural aspect, right? So, um, I like to, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll do like a talk or, or something at like a, um, at like Lightbox or like, um, uh, CTN or uh, um, you know Terminus was one that I just did recently and like and you you do all these talks or I, I'll go back to my school occasionally will we'll help out with storyboarding and uh, some people connect to it some people don't and so um, you know ultimately you know I think you know you can when, when people are ready to hear it they can hear it so some people are like you know some people like <laughs> when you do this lecture and you're like you're like putting your heart out there and you're like doing awesome and then you look down and there's like some people and they're like dude yeah that is amazing and then right next to them is someone like yeah. you know and so like you're like wow like that guy did not you know i did not read for that guy but i do for this person right so like you but and so when you get those people it's kind of like you just keep talking and and you kind of like see like kind of what happens organically that like fits you know some people you meet it's just like everything like you meet people and and some people like really connect to you and it's really easy to like have rapport with them it's just fun and they and they kind of get you and some people it's kind of like a little stilted uh you know uh, it can still be good but you know like it's just uh it's up to them if they still kind of want to like like connect it's it's a back and forth right like you can't i can't go into a place and be like i'm gonna mentor you you know uh, and uh, you can't really go up to someone and be like, I want you to mentor me. You know, like you have to, it's it's like a natural thing. And so it depends. Like, do you want it to happen? Do you not want it to happen? Like, ha like it's fluid, I feel. Yeah, for sure. Especially like that reminds me of when we could go outside and like, you know, at Lightbox <laughs> and like those animation conventions. Yeah. Networking, or at least yeah. the way people go around it is so... <laughs> weird <laughs> it's very strange and it's uh you have to repeat yourself like a million times yeah. and stuff like that because a lot of times you're just really saying you're like you're introducing yourself to people and so that's just kind of hi how are you how are you and of course it's like ridiculous like you know sometimes you want to talk to someone and there's like six people waiting to talk to them so you're trying to have this kind of like nice connection with someone while there's like six other people like like waiting to talk to them yeah, and uh and it's just it, it's very awkward but uh if you can push back some, past some of that awkwardness you know that i think like it's it's very beneficial because if you are on people's radar you just start talking to people you know you just end up like that's how you kind of now like you'll all of a sudden you're like oh my gosh this person's my friend you know what i mean like we're best friends holy crap you know like you those those things kind of happen, but they you can't force them um, as much. I think I mean all you can really do is kind of like force those first steps where you like introduce yourself and you maybe show your portfolio and stuff like that. Um, uh, I think a lot of people feel really awkward in that situation, and so they don't want to be in that situation, right? They don't want people to come and show them stuff. Um, it doesn't really bother me uh, at all. You know, like I, I like looking at people's stuff and 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 talking to them about it. Uh, but yeah, like, I mean, who knows? My feedback maybe is not for you. Like, uh, 
it might not be right or it maybe it's totally right maybe we're maybe we keep you know working together and checking in so there's definitely people that are kind of like that in my life that i talk to i'll i'll like reach out to you know some friends that uh you know watch films from the 1940s and we'll talk about some weird aspect of of filmmaking uh that was you know from the from the 40s and like film noir or something and be like oh this is so you know did you see this movie did you see this did you see this and uh we'll talk about that kind of stuff and and it's, it's usually like old instructors that like are into film or filmmaking and uh so we get to talk about like those aspects of that uh and then there's also like you know younger artists on instagram or uh something that we'll talk to and just like have like a, a chat and they'll uh shoot me stuff or i you know uh uh some of the interns that were interns at pixar like i still talk to them and you know like they're oh i want to show you my stuff okay cool and like you know we'll talk about it like you know all i can really kind of give is like my feedback right so uh yeah yeah that's really good insightful advice i definitely remember being um i kind of had like a head start in the networking stuff because yeah. um when I was 12, I wrote a book and I had to like go across the country and do like different author right. showcases and things. That's I right. failed. Yeah. I did, did exactly the wrong thing so many times. Oh yeah. <laughs> what what, what yeah. was the wrong thing? Uh, the thing of like how you said, like trying, there's this artist that I really, really admired, this great comic book artist. Uh, uh, and I just like promoted my book to their face and like was like let's be friends but to be honest i was 12 so that's yeah, pretty yeah. much how friendships worked when yeah. you're 12. yeah but yeah stuff like that of you know not forcing a connection and um yeah i would also say some people are like that yeah so, so there's so definitely there are some people that you can run up to and i'll be like i want to be friends with you and they're like i want to be friends with you done you know what i mean yeah so. it's a difference of like being genuine though people can definitely smell when you're not like when you're afraid when you're a little nervous when you're like yeah. yeah not doing it but what's very interesting is that that artist now like i talk to them they're cool yeah. it's like totally fine it's just there's some uh there's like a sort of learning curve that you have to force yourself to go through yes uh uh we talked about this recently with some friends uh uh what does sincerity mean and then what does authenticity mean Ooh, is there a difference and, uh, between the two? Oh yeah, I would say so. Um, I think, I think you can be sincere about something, uh, an aspect or an idea, um, or a feeling, uh, but I don't think by sincere, I mean, kind of like, um, yeah. Well, now you're going to catch me on video, not having a, a dictionary in front of me. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. We can cut it out, whichever. It's, <laughs> it's going to be like, we can this is here for two down here. It's going to say, this is not the right definition for any of these words. Uh, but you know, like <laughs> this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, but, uh, but it will, it will say, you know, something like, um, you can be strongly, like you can have strong, like feelings about, something that is a delusion like a like something that's not real like it's not like a thing it's not it's a you you feel strongly about this uh you know that this project you're working on is going good and and uh but it's like i think you know or when you look at certain things it's like these like when you look at something authentically, it's like, it's almost like a slap in the face. It's like a truth. It's like authenticity is a little bit bitter, right? Oh, that's it's very like, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. If you ever go to like uh, weddings, they do this thing where they uh, sometimes they'll, they'll give out like little, like a bag of almonds and they're like candy co color. Uh, when you start going to weddings and stuff, you'll see. When your friends get married yeah, and stuff, I've only some been to like Indian weddings, which are very oh really? So <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to an Indian wedding too, and uh, yeah, I was like, they were like, we have to wait for the auspicious hour, and we we're like, okay. But it was like, uh, this is also in uh, in Canada, and it was like, I'm not even joking, like minus thirty degrees outside. And we were like, okay, well, I guess we got to stay in here then. <laughs> we're like waiting for the thing, but it was awesome. Uh, but some, you know, like the it's kind of like a 
guess sure it's going to be like the western wedding style uh but um there's a whole bunch of like little accoutrements and tchotchke things that you can get with your wedding stuff one of them is like a bag of almonds and they're candy co coated almonds and the idea is that some almonds are you know good and sweet and kind of like nutty and then some are bitter and so uh the reality it's like it's like the reality of of a wedding of getting married of marriage is that there's going to be some good things and there's going to be some bad things and that's usually how the world like it works when it becomes a like when there's like a truth to something right so um i think pixar does a pretty good job of striving for authentic ideas um in the lines of uh you're you know well you'll usually have a couple values in a movie like you know something over here something over here and then the the but the answer at the end is kind of like the synthesis of these ideas where they come together and um you know when you watch a movie and you're crying for the character but you're like yeah you're doing it awesome you know and like and like yes we're rooting for you you know like that's when you find um uh, a sweet spot like a like you're you're looking for that and that's usually where authentic where i kind of like find authenticity Sincerity could be just really much like, you know, it's almost like I sincerely believe in like the crazy happy ending of these stories. Uh, maybe like a kind of like a once about a time that ends very happily. Uh, but uh, I think sometimes, you know, uh, did you watch? I don't want to spoil anything. But did you watch Coco and, and yeah, movies I like did. that? So yeah. I'll put a, just a spoiler for anybody else. Yeah, yeah. Skip, <laughs> skip ahead like. I don't know, a minute or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, well, anyways, I just, I think those movies, you know, you have, you have music on this side and you have family on this side and you look at these things and you think, what do I get from family? Well, I get the acceptance of my parents and you get the, um, uh, like the, my, my, life, my, like I get the family, you know, I, I get all the comforts of everyone that I love all around me and I get to, uh, but maybe is there bad stuff about it? Like, Oh, I get to take over the, the family business. Uh, you know, maybe I'm not into that as much, right? Music. Oh, well, music is, you know, I can do all this awesome musical playing. I can do all this great, um, uh, awesome entertaining for people and I'll be a star and people will really look up to me, you know, but at this, but at the same time, my family doesn't really enjoy it. And everyone, all my heroes are kind of like alone and they're like, kind of like not, they don't have their family backing. Right. So you have these two things. Right. And so usually what you're doing is you're putting things in between these two worlds and, um, how are we re going to reconcile these things? And so, uh, you know, just similar to marriage, you know, you got all the good things. You got like romantic dates and people that could cook for you and people that will be there for you if you're sick or, um, you know, help you take care of the house, help you raise children, pay for, you know, your cars and, and all those things and, and go on vacations with you and, and just kind of like be there all the time to discuss things. And then, you know, someone who's messy or you know nagging or you know there's like those you have to reconcile these kind of like these two sides of this thing into into one candy coated bitter almond right and so you're looking for that kind of and that's like for me it's kind of like this that's that's what kind of authenticity means like you want to be authentic you want to be truthful where it's like you know you admit the good but you also admit the bad that's very good. That's like, I love that because a lot of people uh, fall into that trap of, you know, lying to yourself. Like how we were talking about, like, once I get into Cal Arts, my path yeah. is set in life and I'll never be able to worry about a single thing. Right, right. But right. Th that's a very healthy way of saying, um, yeah, there's good, there's bad. But yeah. Elizabeth Gilbert also talks about this every profession every life decision has 
some sort of, um, she calls it, I, I can't curse on this because it's family friendly, but let's just <laughs> say it's a shoot sandwich. But, <laughs> but yeah, everything has bad parts of it. So it's just like, which ones can you tolerate? Right. How much can you have? That's very, right. very Yeah, scary. yeah. Something that would be a, an insane negative to me won't be a negative to you and vice versa, right? Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, one thing that I really, really love about you, and this is kind of what we already talked about, you openly teach other people, like everything that you learn, like at Lightbox, you're helping people. What motivates yeah. you to continue and like, you know, being on this yeah. interview and <laughs> yeah, helping? Yeah. The, <laughs> That's the, like awesome. I think because the minute you ask me questions that were all these really great questions, uh, I have to answer them. And so now I have to think about all the things that I say and do and how I act and how I perceive myself, all those things are now questioned, right? And so that's also healthy for me. And so it's always been great to for me to try to describe uh, things to other people, right? Like uh, there's some aspects of like, I was just working on this kind of like little it, like tutorial on like how to use like some subjective camera work, right? Which means like filming everything from this character's point of view. And I thought I had like a really good, uh, you know, layout and I, I um, it's very clear. I thought it was, you know, very logical, clear and all that stuff. And it's just like right down the line. And it's great. And I showed it to one of my friends. And he's all boring. And I was like, oh, you're right. It's not funny or like entertaining. And it could be. And then people would be like more into it. So, you know, I, I, I think like uh, <laughs> I, I think you just learn. Like I'm interested in learning myself. Right. And I think you learn a lot by trying to describe to other people what you've kind of like picked up from experience or muscle memory things like that right? oh definitely that definitely shows i remember your talk from lightbox it was like literally like mind-blowing it was really really fantastic oh great i'm glad you liked it yeah see i i'm glad some people like it there you go other people are just <laughs> like you could just see them like uh, yeah, I actually have my sketchbook from that day. I was looking back at it. This guy was blocking the screen and I couldn't see. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. But yeah, and he was... hated it. That guy hated it. <laughs> yeah, it was like, hey, whatever. <laughs> um, what I think when, I, when, when, we're t when we're talking about those things, though, um, the thing that I found that helps the most or the thing that connects with people the most is the emotional stuff. So if you can talk about the emotional things, uh, sure. Like, oh, do you know about filmmaking? Do you know about composition? And these rules and Fibonacci's sequence and, you know, all this stuff. And, and you can talk about those like really, really kind of like strict rules on uh, camera or that type of stuff. But uh, what you're really looking for is an emotional feeling from that stuff. And so when, you know, the best talks that you, if someone goes and they talk about making, like Finding Dory, the best talks are the ones about talking about the emotional aspects that went into it um, and and how you can get that emotion into your into your story and not necessarily all the technical stuff because the technical stuff right it's kind of a little boring I, it's very it's very useful it's essential to help you to get to the emotional aspect but the emotional aspect is what you're always aiming for and so you're not aiming for technically completely 100% accurate stuff you're aiming for like the emotional part and so in those talks all I'm saying is that uh, uh, the more I edit them like it changes all the time right I you're constantly editing stuff like oh how could this be better is this boring um, and I think what it is is you just want to get like an emotional reaction out of people and so maybe I think the one that you were at uh, we, we drew like I was like all right we're gonna draw the screen or whatever mm -hmm. and usually that scares the crap out of people and it's great oh my gosh I was terrified <laughs> like with the chisel tips you just handed us and we're like I'm not prepared for this I didn't do my warm-up so I did yeah, not expect exactly exactly and I think that what's hilarious is that because we're all animators and we're all the same uh, like like that we have all that shared in common we all immediately without question 
oh well then i oh shoot i get a better no one no one is like i'm yeah. not drawing that you know like no every every single person is like oh i gotta draw and so it's really entertaining to watch but you know but also i think it gets an emotional drive and there and now you're you're drawing and you're like oh i better do a, a good drawing and it's like oh but i only gave you 30 seconds you know and so uh, i think that part of it is like uh i like that part all right kind of gets you like riled up a little bit so um i kind of like wanted to like lean more into that if i talk if i talk about uh like the technical aspects of why you would cut from this to this to this uh i think a lot of people are like you know like they just they're not as because there's no uh visceral reaction to that oh right? definitely and another thing that i wanted to say like uh you made us do all those drawings like the reverse storyboarding thing yeah. i met someone else uh i met another professional artist during that time who asked to look at my uh sketchbook and that was like the last page and they thought like a professional person did them but if they ended up being like i'm very proud of i was like at that time this is three years ago Three, yeah, three yeah, maybe. Yeah, gosh. Oh my god. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, they ended up being like some of my favorite things that I did that year. Oh wow. Yeah, I love that yeah. spontaneity. Um, yeah. So you worked in the animation industry for like sixteen-ish year. Yeah. Like in Pixar and like Blue Sky, what right. a lot of young artists like me wonder. We already talked about this, but if that feeling for, of I'll probably hopefully I have a better answer this time. <laughs> of being good enough ever goes away do you feel yeah. like you're ever good enough like in the context of Never. mastering the technical aspects and the draftsmanship versus like how you were talking about the story and the feeling you have it's a to big question sorry yeah, it's a, it, no it's great it's great i think you have to you have to um again you have to get your hands dirty and you have to be confident because there's no uh there's no no two assignments are ever really the same in animation which is again terrifying and amazing at the same time right so you always have like something to learn something to look at something to think about um and so it's important to kind of like go into something with like an open mind and i'm not going to worry too much about this um I always encourage people to just like work however way, which way you want. Almost every story artist that works at Pixar, that works at Blue Sky, their their initial stages of working are all different. Some people draw on little post-its and some people draw on paper without any frames around stuff. And some people just write ideas down in a book for like hours on end. And some people draw little thumbnails on the script itself. And some people go right into storyboarding and like you just have like whatever you you have to like you have to relieve yourself in those initial stages of 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 too like trying too many things like work in the medium that feels really good to you work in the in the style work in the way that feels good to you because that's like if you have too many things that you're like okay i'm gonna try to now draw with sharpie which i normally don't do and i'm gonna try to draw on post-its which i normally don't do uh i usually draw my sketchbook i draw i'm gonna draw on post-its and and if you have too many like hang-ups of like trying to do too many things you're you're gonna have a hard time focusing on that like the real aspect of it which is like the storytelling the emotional aspect of it right so you want to like in those early stages like relieve yourself of that of that and that's so that's what i do in those early stages i usually do little thumbnails i know i'm not i'm wasting i'll have to redraw them i'm kind of wasting time sure can it be called a waste of time who knows i mean it's art right so like it's not really right and so i thumbnail i just think about like the, my ideas and just having fun just relaxing oh i can just throw these ideas away if i want to they're just little drawings oh yeah i'll throw that away oh, i'll just do another drawing oh isn't that funny maybe i'll draw the character like this for a while that's weird and then you know like you you have like um it's kind of like this that's like the art side of it and then at a certain point you do like take that and then you're like okay now that i've done that thinking like i'm going to turn off that part of my brain and i'm going to turn on this part of the brain it's it's been described as being like in storyboarding there's like 12 balls to juggle but you can only juggle like five and so 
every time you must choose which five you're going to do. Like, it, you know, is this scene very heavy on uh, lighting? Yeah. Okay. Well, then maybe I'll do a little bit of like lighting aspects in here. Oh, is this a funny scene? Okay. Well, maybe I'll just do like kind of like derpy drawings and like kind of goofy drawings. Oh, is this scene uh, like heavy on acting? Okay. Well, then I'm going to do more acting, but I'm not going to shade anything in because I, I want to just focus more on the acting, right? So like those are kind of like the balls that you're juggling at any given time, but you can't juggle them all. And so a lot of people try to juggle them all right right away and it's just like bruh you just fumble it all and you don't want to work on it so you put it off you know so i think you know you really have to kind of like go into it as being like okay what's you know what's the point of the scene who am i because i'm working on this scene and so i'm going to do the right thing for myself to make myself feel comfortable in working on this scene does that make that sense that is yeah that is like such uh I'm relieved to hear that advice because <laughs> like it's very like comforting and nice because I was studying um, a bunch of storyboard artists from like Infinity Train and Owl House yeah. and I was trying to figure out how they do it and you're totally right. There's so yeah. many different processes and I thought yeah. that they were all right but right. you're so right it depends. That yeah. is very good advice. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 wild. You'll not find two story artists that work the same way. Yeah. It's, it's do you feel wild. like you ever, do you ever, do you burn out faster? Because it seems like you put so much of yourself into your work and then doing that, like, you know, yeah. five times a week, like every day. Yeah. I think, I mean, sometimes there's ebbs and flows, right? So sometimes like you're, you're into it. I totally see the scene in my head. I need to get this out. I, I you know, I'm going to, I'm going to get it out as fast as I can. I'm going to do a great job. And so I'm uh, not really I'm feeling, I, you know, I, I'm a little, uh, I don't have as much energy to put into the creative aspect of this. Just being honest with yourself like that is, is helpful. Uh, but it is a job. So like, you know, in some of those things, you kind of just have to push through and, 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 and do the drawings. But um, again, like all you, the thing that makes it easy for you is just to remove all the problems or any like strict things that you're putting on yourself. Just if, if you feel overwhelmed, just do one thing at a time. I don't even know what this character looks like. Oh, okay. Well then why don't you just, you know, just draw the character in your sketchbook for a little while and just kind of play with the idea of the design and stuff like that. Have fun, you know, like, well, what kind of character are they? Are they like, are they a bookworm? Okay, well, maybe they're sitting on a bunch of books. And maybe they always have a book with them. Maybe their nose is in a book, this whole scene. And, you know, they're not watching where they're going. They're one of those crazy people that tries to read and walk at the same time, which is ridiculous. Um, and uh, uh, I, I saw, <laughs> we saw this woman walking at the park the other day, and she had a book, and she was walking. Like, I'm like oh, you're wow. not reading. <laughs> sit down. <laughs> Fake and, fan. <laughs> and you're not walking well. You need to sit down and read and then go take a walk, you know? But, oh my uh, God, that's hilarious. Yeah, but something, you know, like, uh, you know, anyways. Oh, how about that? Like, there, now, like, maybe I put this character in there, like, trying to read and walk, and they smack into stuff, and someone's like, dude, you need to sit down and read, you know? So, you know, uh, I think just kind of, like, letting yourself, like, into that kind of, like, creative space really does solve a lot of problems for you. I think... Um, the burnout really is kind of like the physical aspect of creating the storyboard sometimes and people's hands get hurt, things like that. So you got to be careful about, you know, having like a desk that's the right space and stuff. We had, had uh, one uh, guy that I was working with had, uh, he just, he was just like working, he was like sitting on a box or like a really crappy chair. And um, it's like, you know, like, I, I promise you, it's totally worth it to get a good chair, at least mm -hmm. a decent chair, like whatever, a hundred bucks or two, you know, 200 bucks, maybe like, you know, like, but I think, and a, and a nice decent desk to like set yourself up for success. Um, those, you know, it's not like photography. You don't need a full like rendering studio or anything like that. So a lot of the material that we have to buy in as storyboard artists is not that expensive. Um, so in the, in the grand scheme of things, um, so invest in, in the right, in the right stuff, uh, early on to kind of like give yourself that success so you don't burn out. That's smart. So, uh, you were talking about the technical 
stuff versus their emotion, which drives you. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you feel is the most important to work on, especially for, I don't know, young little baby storyboard artists or uh-huh. something? This is yeah. the only technical art related thing I will ever ask. <laughs> <laughs> is this technical? Oh, so I you guess want... so. I try not to ask like typical, like, oh my god, teach me how to draw questions, because I know right. people get tired of that. So yeah. this is yeah. the only thing. <laughs> sure. Sure. Okay. I'll keep it real general because get digging into anything is like too, it's just not going to be as helpful. But I would say um, if you want to work in stuff that similar to Pixar or Blue Sky or, um, you know, Disney movies, things like this, um, it's a lot of character. Uh, and so focus on like your characters and a lot of times in drawing, uh, you might have, we you might remember this, but it's, it's really just drawing the eyes and the silhouette. The eyes are what people look for. People look for, uh, eyes and faces in almost everything. If you, you know, they took a bunch of pictures of the, of Mars early on one of the satellites that was passing by, this is, you know. 40 years ago, 50 years ago. And uh, they took a bunch of pictures of them, of Mars and they saw a shadow and it was a sh- and it looked like a face. It was like a mo- it was like a gigantic face that was carved into Mars. And people lost their minds because they're like, "Oh, there's a there's Martians down there and they have a big, you know, monument that they made of a face that looks kind of like an alien but kind of like human and uh, and, and blah 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 and it, people like lost their minds about it." But as people, we're trained to look for that. So we're looking for faces. We're looking at faces, you know. Um, the most compelling thing for us, the most kind of like scary thing for us is a human face. But at the same, you know, that's why you can watch like um, CG that's really close or like a, a like a, a robot that looks really, really close to being a person, but it's not because you, t- you can tell these little micro movements because you are, as a human being, are an expert at looking at other people's faces. Oh, and definitely. So... My uh, middle school <laughs> science teacher used to be, she used to watch uh, ghost documentaries, you know, like oh, yeah. those kind of things, just yeah. because it, the human ability to stop faces is so, like, in tune. Um, yeah. Another yeah. question I wanted to ask is, sure. what's the most fearless thing you've ever done? Not oh necessarily in art, but in life. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean, probably be some sort of like physical aspect of something. Um, oh gosh, I don't know. There's like a, I mean, I, I'm, I'm getting flashes, a bunch of like things of various elements of like jumping off to something really high or <laughs> uh, uh, we used to do this thing when we were kids called coffin boarding where like you take a skateboard and then you lay down on it like this. Oh and then no! You, and then you go down, <laughs> you go down hills, and uh, I had a couple crashes that were pretty gnarly. But for some reason, we egged each other on, and you know, if you asked me now, I'd be like, no, I would never do that. That's ridiculous. But of course, like when you're a kid, you're like, sweet. So uh, you know, when I was probably like 15, I think we were just doing that quite a bit, and uh, I, yeah, <laughs> it feels like a, that feels like something that was like definitely like okay i'm fine like this will be this will be okay or uh you know if you go skiing and you get off course or something and now you're going down some area that's like super rocky or dangerous with trees and too much snow and you can't get out of it like that kind of thing you just keep going um do you think uh, that's uh the I absence the fi- of fear or do I, you feel- I don't know because i think i think yeah like, i think when it's like happens happens it is what it is <laughs> Yeah, yeah, basically. I think what I I think I think once you're in the middle of it, that's where your kind of mind goes, right? Yeah. You're like, well, I guess this is happening. So Oh yeah, I've definitely just... like had times where I I love the ocean, but sometimes I paddle too far. <laughs> oh yeah. You know, I oh, don't want to yeah? die also, so. Oh my gosh. Yeah, like if you get caught in like a a riptide or yeah. something. Oh like, my gosh. Oh, yeah, it's so and uh oh, we got caught in a real bad riptide when I was Ooh. also when I was younger and uh we got pulled miles and miles like uh out uh and south like when we got back to land eventually we had to walk for like an hour or something to get oh back to oh my god your feet must have like cramped so much oh no it was no no, no it was just like, like more along the lines of like we were just out there and i think we were like paddling around on surfboards and uh the waves were just too scary for us to ride back in because they were just like too big for us and 
it was very dangerous and uh for some reason like the water was pulling out too so we ended up having this like real um issue getting back but i i just remember being like all right we're in the this is happening so do your best and uh, survive yes <laughs> well. so i think that's really kind of like where my brain goes when i think about those things um fear you know uh was there a time that you were scared of something but it ended up you know, they say that um, bravery is, is not the absence of fear, but it's doing something in spite of that. Right. Yeah. Well, I feel like that's what, I, that's what I was feeling. I was like, I guess I must be fear then if I'm like, oh, crap, I'm going to die. Well, you know, try not to die and do your best. You know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, mostly I, I think I try to live in a life without fear uh, a lot of times. I think... Uh, I think the fear kind of comes into when you get to when you, as you as you as you get older and stuff you you realize how valuable time is right so um, let's say you get hired on a movie and you're gonna work on it for five years or something right but I think as you get older those five years become much more valuable and you're like I don't want to really I don't, do I want to invest my time into this five years do I want to you know, do I want to do something else? You know, and uh, and some of my older friends, you know, uh, uh, what's what's going to be like? I, you know, I'm going to retire at some point in the next ten years or something. But they'll say this, right? And they'll be like, "What does that mean? Like, how do I how do I end my career? Like, how do I? Uh, I think, you know, a lot of those things end up being." kind of fear based i guess because they're in the back of your head and they have to do with mortality and um and how you're gonna like how you're going to face kind of like your end or like a you know like a decline and what you can do and what you can work on and stuff like that the minute you figure everything out the minute you like are good at like all this stuff and you can like do all these things then your body and your mind start deteriorating i feel and it's just like so now you That's have to mean. do <laughs> is like, it what a cruel trick no i totally totally <laughs> right and so uh you know uh there's also this uh kind of ancient philosophy of uh of uh from the ancient greeks talking about uh you know what is what is happiness who's happy and it's like you know uh all your happiness can be taken away uh at any moment and it's very dangerous and it's scary right and uh and so the idea in this like ancient greek kind of like idea from this guy named solon was that you know you're you're only happy you can only count someone as happy after they're dead because they uh when you go i know this gets very morbid right sorry but uh but um, that's fine i when i was 13 i did a thing on how we're all gonna die anyway so it's all right <laughs> see there you go well it's true right i mean that's but like what's like that makes living valuable right so like you always mm -hmm. have to kind of look at things on the other side of it so um this morning i you know i usually get up kind of early but since this morning i stayed in bed and i read you know a little bit and hung out and that's like extreme privilege and happiness for me you know what i mean i'm just like oh i can do this this is great you know it's a saturday morning so i think uh then i had know, to interrupt with an interview exactly you know, and I, actually, you I, I had to ask my parents i had to ask right. my parents if adults wake up at 9 30 in the morning on a saturday because i didn't know uh, what did they say <laughs> they were like they were like uh if there's like a coherent human being you will now I, you know who, <laughs> Uh, who knows you know, yeah some people like to sleep until noon you know but anyways mm -hmm. the idea is that uh the of about the happiness and and fear is that like uh, uh it's a it's 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 a mix i'm always trying to figure it out like you know i'm sisyphus i'm pushing the rock um you know in the in the grand scheme of things will i put a dent in the universe will i not um if i um a lot, a lot of those, I feel like a lot of those people that are like really hell bent on that, it's like, even if they put a dent in the universe, they wouldn't be satisfied. And so it's kind of like a magical, a magical balance of like being present, being happy with like what you have and stuff. And then at the same time, kind of like looking towards the future and, and, and being okay with it, but kind of like trying to manipulate it in the way that you want it to be. Right. So like, yeah. 
who knows? You're going to get sick. Um, uh, you know, my, you know, like something bad will happen. Something good will happen. Um, but uh, usually, you know, you have to kind of like go into those elements at the end, preparing for like a little bit of grace and like, and where you are. And did I direct the most art critically acclaimed film in the world or did I write the next like the great American novel or things like that you know no but I think you know in some ways uh, that's okay you just have to be you'll be okay with it you know and so I, I think there's fear about wrestling with that like, I'll never be good enough I oh, I have a failure at life I didn't I didn't get what I wanted to get done but you know, you also have to look at the other aspects of, well, I, you know, worked in storyboards and I got to, I was super lucky to work at Pixar. That's awesome. And be part of these movies. And so, you know, you just have to like, look at these things. It's like, we were talking about where it's like, okay, once I get this job, everything will be fine. But the minute you get there is now like the, you know, you're here and the grass is greener and there's always an aspect of like where to grow, where to, where to go next. And I think that like, that is helpful but also extremely confusing and can be very fear inducing that's very interesting to hear another person's perspective on that it takes like um i think it takes four generations or five if you're like famous for uh -huh. you to be like completely forgotten or at least oh. that's my theory because uh -huh. from what i've observed in my very long years of living e yeah but <laughs> excellent excellent but it's very interesting to hear other people's mindsets on that because i don't know legacy is something i think a lot of people think about and definitely like is a theme personally in my yeah. life so it's very interesting to hear that yeah you know like uh, you know abraham lincoln you go to he's a legend right he's yeah. like this like legendary character and uh he wasn't that long ago <laughs> But he was a real person. He was probably a human being, just like everyone else. And he had problems, and he had, and he had he had good things and bad things, and he had worries and he had fears and and everything like that. But you know, yeah, like you're saying, like that's interesting because like a couple of generations later, you know, we got Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Slayer. You know, <laughs> wow, yeah, the crowning achievement. <laughs> um, what do you? What would you say to someone who struggles with fear in art? Uh, uh, give it some, just, just get your hands dirty. Just dig around in there and have fun and find what you would like to do. Because, um, the fear level, you know, the fear works in a way that's like, it's, you always think it's going to be way worse than it, than it is. And, uh, um, that's true. Yeah. It's almost always like that. And so just kind of get in there. And also you can't. You can't maintain like if you're like at a fear level of like 10 you can't like maintain like that level for very long so when you get in there and you start digging around and just like getting yourself familiar with what you're working on um and, and just kind of like keep digging around at it your fear level is going to go down what do you think um is a common myth that like students or like young artists have about working in the animation industry uh that that we don't that don't that people don't struggle, uh, that people uh, know exactly what they're gonna do at any given time, you know. Uh, there's kind of like a mythology around that that uh, you know when you look at Disneyland or when you look at like stories about Pixar, right? Like uh, there's always these great stories, but like uh, the things like uh, that they fig those people figured those things out right away. It wasn't the case. They worked at it, and uh, they had really shitty days, or sorry, crappy days, and uh, but they had really, you know, they they had not not great days, and they had they had like struggled, didn't know what to do, avoided work like we all do, and called in sick or tried to do anything else, cleaned their entire house, you know. Uh, but I think when you when you're done, you go through it all, then you kind of like can like you know you, you can manipulate the shape of that story a little bit to make it seem like a little bit um you know yeah there there was always a story i think it was like that that came out of like maybe the teaser for 
Wally or something like that. And it was like, one day, everyone, once upon a time, all the, the four directors got together and they had a lunch and they just thought of cool ideas and they and they drew all their ideas on paper napkins in that one lunch and uh and they made you know they made toy story and finding nemo and wally and uh and every other top hit that you've ever thought of right and there's that there's that kind of like feeling but it doesn't those guys worked hard and they worked their butts off and they they created those things it wasn't like a willy-nilly lunch of like insane genius where they just you know if they did it's because they were working on that stuff for years and thinking about it and writing about it and drawing it and talking about it and looking at different ways to think about it but like they did the work you know and so uh uh i think the myth is that there's like someone's i sit you know sit down and i ha <laughs> ha and it's like you know it's 8 p.m 8 a.m and i just like okay beep, beep, and then i just draw from drawing one to like 1000 doesn't work like that it's like it's very much like i'm gonna start with drawing you know every a lot of story artists always ask how many drawings do you have to do a day and uh again it's creative so i it's a hard question to ask and i used to ask that question all the time how many well how many drawings do you have to do a day like and it's kind of a it's like a poisonous question it doesn't really mean anything simply because some days you'll go in and you'll work really hard on something and you got like 20 good drawings out of it and then the next day you'll go in and you'll have 200 drawings so there's no like you know even out i guess i i, I guess in the grand scheme of things i would say that you should probably do like uh, you know like a like a page a day is kind of like what what people say for storyboards and that gives you kind of like a level of like okay i should keep this loose and and simple you know because it's storyboards you're just planning things out so uh i think that kind of like those mythos kind of like feed into that where uh you know there's like a certain level of this and that but the the job isn't like that it's very much uh it's creative which is great but also at the same time all the aspects of that that are weird of like doubt and I just I spent this whole day just walking around in circles and d draw a darn thing, but I thought about the thing the whole day, or I had to go. I had, just went to the park and I, you know, ate lunch out in the park and hung out with some friends and just talked about it a little bit, or I watched a bunch of movies and then, or it's like, oh, this day, yeah, I just drew 300 drawings. It was crazy, you know. Uh, so the the job is like are kind of like erratic, but. Um, that's why I'm, you know, saying like it's it's important to like hold on to that center. So, you know, I think there's a lot of 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 uh, kind of like I think people have a cartoony aspect of what the job is when they come into that into the into the industry, but it's it's just people like everything else, you know. That's a really good answer. That's very insightful. Uh, we're coming up on the end of the interview. We're almost oh, wow. here. Yeah. Oh wow! All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what do you wish you were taught about, like the industry or working or I know you've like led a team before, in general? Like, what do yeah. you wish somebody like gave you a heads up? Uh, I, probably just kind of like what we were just talking about, which is the idea of of uh, like you think that as it importance of decisions go up the ladder uh that people will have uh they're just human beings everyone's a human being it's crazy and it's just uh no one's like like a demigod or anything like that you know they're all people just like you and me and so those aspects of that are hard to remember when you're removed um, but it's good to think about it when you are getting like when you when you really kind of like think about it and you give people the benefit of the doubt. I think a lot of problems can be solved by looking at things and you know um, you know if it's uh, uh, you know this person you know, got caught stealing and it's like oh okay well you know i 
uh, this might be a bad example, but like the idea of like, just kind of like look at all aspects of it before you kind of start making judgments. Um, and I think when I was, you know, when you're younger, you think about those things, like you think of a cartoony aspect of how people would work at these, at these places. And it's just not the truth. Like there's just people like everyone else, like they have better days and good days and bad days and good decisions and bad decisions and irrational, lame, emotional choices and logical good ones. And, you know, uh, but that kind of stuff. And, and uh, you just kind of like have to take it all with a grain of salt. Also just that things, you know, once you get there, like who knows, it might not work out for you. Like you don't want, uh, you know, I definitely do feel like people get in the trap of being like, but I, you know, I want to work at Pixar. I want to work at Pixar. Mm -hmm. But like when I look at the stuff that they draw or they're making, I'm like, but this isn't what Pixar does. Like, but so why do you want to work at Pixar? Because this isn't what they do. Like, if you want to do this, this looks like, uh, you know, this looks like cool art for like Mass Effect or like a science fiction like video game you should go work at you know uh, uh you know like like maybe like work on halo or work on mass effect or something like that you should go work there because like if you want to draw if you come here and you show me your portfolio and it's a whole portfolio of space marines you know with guns and various like outfits like that i'm like dude just go work at you know uh uh work at these like places that like that will Will allow you to thrive a little bit better in the world that you want to what that you want to do yeah definitely i feel the same way like um i went to cal arts to study for a summer animation yeah. program and i yeah. found out that i didn't like art school like it was a yeah. great fantastic experience teachers were yeah. great and people were amazing but yeah. uh I, uh I from that like shocked my entire world because from the age of 12, I was just working to get into CalArts, to get into CalArts, but suddenly that was gone. But wow. I'm very happy that that's gone. I don't want yeah. to go to CalArts. <laughs> it's great, but I, I'm much more happy doing stuff like this, like interviewing people like you and making my own stuff and not being bound by anyone else's rules, which, like right. how you say, it right. leads, life just leads you in different directions, and that's totally fine. Yeah, it's totally fine. I just, I think there's... I think there's some level of people will, uh, your ego has a hard time with the idea of like, I aim for this one thing and I told everyone that I wanted it. And then when I got it, I didn't want it. And it's like, that's fine. You made a mistake. No one cares. The only one is like, why are you punishing yourself by trying to live with this mistake? You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. The last question I wanted to ask you, we yeah. made it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the last question I wanted to ask you is, what is something that you thought was scary or like terrifying, but uh -huh. you were able to overcome or get through? Oh gosh, uh, uh, there's so many aspects of that. Uh, you know, yeah, take all the time you need to think. It's totally fine. Gosh, wow, jeez, uh, <laughs> emotional exhausting question, huh? <laughs> Uh, yeah, but I think, uh, you know, when you have like relationships with people and um, they're not working out. And so you have to like cho choose your kind of own path and uh, what you're going to do. Um, that can be pretty painful, especially when you've made some choices that uh, in your mind, you know, you really wanted something to work and it, it was not maybe it's not going to work anymore. And so uh, those things end up being really scary and uh but when you make the choice which seems at the time daunting and a lot of work to uh but it, once you make the choice to kind of like write the situation for yourself it does feel like a lot better a tremendous amount of like relief can come out of that so i think living with something hanging over your head is just really difficult and can hurt you in a lot of different ways physically mentally so uh i think don't be if you know like i like i look at that and i go okay well that fear like made you like afraid to change but once you were able to change and adapt uh it it was better so i think sometimes i, I think in that in that case like it was just a matter of i had to like do a larger change to my life and then 
that was I was able to uh, uh, kind of like get over that overwhelming fear because I had to I had to do a pretty big like kind of drastic more drastic change. Do you wish that thing never happened? No, no, it, it has to it has to happen. And I'm glad it you know in, in a lot of ways that those things happen because when you come through the other end, you're just left with yourself. And now you know uh, a little bit more about yourself because you, uh, that's what's, what's left is you essentially. And so some things that you thought were aspects of yourself are not really aspects of yourself, I think. Do you have uh, an example of that? Or you don't have to say if you can. Yeah, yeah, but... yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of a light, simple one. Uh, but I, you know, uh, and more along the lines of like, uh, once you, let's see, like, uh, oh, like I was like a, I was a smoker and then, uh, and I, I used to smoke and then I moved to San Francisco from Southern California and I thought that I would oh, I'll give it up and I'll do these things and everything will be different. I'll see myself in my mind as like a different person. But I did end up bringing that with me. And I just remember a friend saying like, oh, well, wherever you go, you know, you bring yourself with you. And that's what that means. It's that like, what what aspects are you are still like, are still kind of like you. And um, I guess that's a bad example because I have quit smoking <laughs> a long time ago. But, uh, you know, that's in good. that- Congratulations. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, but in the in the grand scheme of things, and it was so long ago that it kind of feels like a weird distant memory. Uh, but I don't think that uh, there are going to be some things that aren't like an end all be all. Like you're going to like come through the end, and there's still going to be aspects of you that didn't change, um, and you'll cut you'll come out of those. Uh, You'll, you'll like it's like whatever sticks to you whatever sticks in your but that's what makes makes you like ma you're made up of that thing of those things um, so you know I guess I'm rambling here a bit but I, the idea would be that you know you you go through these changes uh, and something that you thought was really core to you forever like let's say drawing but I do know people that are just like, I just don't, I don't feel like I want to draw anymore. And like, dude, you're like the best draftsmanship, of, you know, draftsman I've ever seen. Like, you don't want to draw? No, eh, not really. And it's like, yeah, man, like that's maybe drawing will no longer be part of your life. I'm sure a lot of artists will hear that and be like, I can't imagine that. But <laughs> yeah, well, shoot. I think, you know, live for 30 years and see what happens. Cause like I, you know, life, life is, life is crazy. So you might, you might be like, I'm really into accounting and what you know but uh it happens so i think those those things kind of like move around but uh you know yeah i i guess like those you feel like those things are like embedded into your being but uh they still are like kind of like a bit flexible and and you and uh and and kind of like the elements that you're saying like do you regret going through those bad things no because once you go through those things, you kind of see what like comes out in the wash. And a lot of times it's something that you thought like, oh, I thought I was going to be in this relationship forever. Turns out it's not going to happen. And like, and because you've based so much of your kind of like personality and your, your whole outlook on your own life in that situation and it changes. Yeah. It can be, it can be a little like distressing. Yeah, definitely. That's very good advice. That reminds me of, uh, I made a video about like, in, I did an anti sketchbook going against all of the advice that all these yes. art teachers gave me. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> and it ended up being like, the best thing. It was awesome. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> I took very a break cool. from art and it was very fun. But yeah, oh, that's awesome. fantastic. I think a lot of the stuff that you talked about and all the questions you asked, like, have given me a lot to think about. And so, you know, I, Thank you so much for asking all those questions because they're great and i think uh um you know they're hard questions and they're good to kind of like push and prod at people to kind of like see what their answers are um 
if someone had a ready-made answer for all of those questions about emotional things, I'd be like, wow. But uh, uh, I think I think it's good because I, I loved answering all the questions and I, thank you for asking them. And, and I think they, but they also leave me with kind of like questions of my own to ask, you know, for myself and, and stuff like that. So oh, all in all, a really great interview. <laughs> Thank you so much. That means so much. That's pretty much exactly the reaction I like. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that thank thank you. That really does mean a lot. So, um, hey. where's your contact info? Where can people find you or your work? Just oh shoot, say it. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, hold on, let me find my. In so I'm, I feel like I'm slowly going through. A, uh, my Instagram has not been updated in a little bit, but uh, it's a uh, daily draw. And you can kind of find me there and uh, shoot me a, a message there uh, on Instagram. Awesome. Cool. I'll have that in the description, so it's totally okay. fine. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. Look, I'll just write it right here. Right? Okay, yeah, okay. probably. <laughs> uh, I'll be too lazy to edit that, but it's fine. <laughs> okay. Good. 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 In the description. In the description. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for being here. I really, really, really appreciate that. Yeah, of course. So, we're just going to yeah. wave bye to the camera. Okay. Bye. All right. <laughs> bye, everyone. Thanks for listening to Rambling. <laughs> <laughs> thanks nicole for trying to keep me on uh point and be like uh <laughs> asking such poignant questions that make me question my own being <laughs> yeah no problem that's what i'm here for <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.